delicious seafood. But I'm most inspired by the women paving their own paths in this industry and ensuring future generations will have plenty of fish in the sea. Hey there, everyone. I'm Joe Fryer in for Carson Daly for this month's episode of Pop Start Plus Rewind, where we count down some of the top pop culture moments at today. New music and podcasts have kept us busy this July, from Shania Twain to Zach Brown and even Jose Andres. Today has gotten an inside look at all that's up and coming in the world of listening. First up, the queen of country pop. Earlier this month, Hoda got the chance to go behind the scenes and on stage with Shania Twain at her concert here in New York, making for a moment to remember. Take a look. It does feel like I'm having the time yeah. of my life. I'm so enjoying it, I'm absorbing it. I'm really looking at the people, really looking at them, observing them. And for almost three decades, music legend Shania Twain has been giving them something to look at. But there's been something different about this Shania of her latest tour, Queen of Me. She says she's never felt freer. You are immersed. I mean, you are in it. You might as well be crowd surfing. I feel like you're like that kind, you're right in it. I, I feel more appreciative now, I mm. think, than, than ever in my career. I'm celebrating, uh, you know, loving my voice and, and the way I sing. It's very satisfying to me to be able to sing out and mm -hmm. express myself through my voice again without any reservation and any mm. fear. Is there one song when you pick up the mic and you go, this one always feels the sweetest? Well, you're still the one is always. You're still the one. You're still the one I love to And I think it means so much more after COVID as well because the whole world has been through very recently mm -hmm. such an intense, uh, struggle mm -hmm. and so coming out on the other side of that we have all that we're making it mm -hmm. you know against the odds mm -hmm. the song champions togetherness this is your actual wardrobe speaking of togetherness I was about to experience a whole lot of it with Shania backstage in her dressing room this is what I call pink yeah. Elvis oh my god I went in thinking that we were going to see what she would be wearing not sure what's happening, but I like it. As it turns out, Shania had other plans. Oh my God, am I wearing an outfit? Coming over here. Okay, what's happening? Yeah, I have underwear on. <laughs> no, no. I have underwear on, seriously. They're trunks. <laughs> They're performance. This is hilarious. They're just pretty okay, totally totally normal. You know that newfound fearlessness we were just talking about? <laughs> I'm gonna pee my pants. Yeah. Seriously. Oh, my, my, I'm sorry to pee my trunks. Okay, I'm gonna wear it, but can I wear some pants under? I had to find some for myself and fast. Cross your legs and just let this, you know, let this be part of your, your life right now. <laughs> Look at the camera. Okay. Like, look how pretty it is with her hair. She's gorgeous. This has been the best. I was in Shania's hands now. Let's go. And suddenly found myself headed out on stage in front of 20,000 screaming Shania fans. Now, before I do this next song, I want to introduce someone that I've loved for many years. We've been good friends for a long, long time, and we text about all kinds of things, staying in touch, but there's nothing like being in person together. Please welcome to the stage my good friend, Hoda! First of all, I want to say thank you, but I'm actually here for another reason, to surprise you with a little something. I had the honor of presenting Shania with a double diamond platinum record for her 1997 breakthrough album, Come On Over. And then she had a surprise for us, the announcement of the reissuing of Come On Over on August 25th. So you guys are the first to know. I'm very excited about it. It's really amazing how music can go this full cycle and live through generations, so. And that's, of course, all because of you, thanks to you. And what happened next would go on to stun me. Hoda, after all these years of knowing you, mm -hmm. 
we're finally gonna sing together. Still the one that I love, the only one I dream of. Still the one I kiss. Good night. As I left the stage, I knew that moment, that magic would stay with me for a lifetime. It was just so incredibly moving and beautiful. It's like you, there are moments you dream about happening and friends who you know everything you're going to spend a moment like that with. And anyway, she's so generous and kind. Like, I don't even know what to say, but I'm touched and I'm moved. And it's a moment I'll never forget. Long as I live. In the words of Shania, that does impress me much. Coming up next, two stars had new podcasts drop this month. We're going to revisit their time at Today when we come back. Welcome back to Pop Start Plus Rewind. Whether you've been to one of his restaurants or heard of his philanthropic efforts all around the world, there's not much Jose Andres can't do. His latest venture brings him into the world of podcasting as the host of Longer Tables, where he's inviting celebrity guests to share their connections to food. Jose invited Hoda on his podcast and then dropped by Studio 1A ahead of the episode's release. Take a look. Hello, hello, Huda. So good to have you in my podcast, Longer Tables. Jose, I have to tell you, I'm honored to be sitting across your long table. I'm having a glass of sherry. You left me a glass of your sherry, too. Do you see that? Hey! Hey! I'm having sherry, manzanilla, <laughs> iberico ham. And sherry, I think they're the two best things. Ah, uh, I'm going to try one. Mm. Mm. We are together, Longer Tables. A long table makes people like you and I mm. uh, be connecting. So I was checking, obviously, details of your life. You were born in Norman, Oklahoma, but you were raised in Morgantown, West Virginia. I love Morgantown. Tell me. It's a beautiful city. Every time a, f a friend from the plaza shows up from Morgantown, we sing the fight song. It's West Virginia. It's West Virginia. The pride of every mountaineer. I mean, we know the whole thing and I have to do it. Because that's love. The word on the street is that your mom is an excellent cook and sends baklava randomly to the Today Show. Let me tell you something. I have distinct memories, Jose, of my mom making that baklava so meticulously with the phyllo dough and then the layer of walnuts and the honey and the butter. And that baklava represents everything to me. And I realize her language of love, Jose, has always been food. As a morning host, mm -hmm. how and when your day starts? What's going on in your life? So, Jose, I set my alarm at 3 a.m. And then until 4.15, I go through a thing in the morning where I try to ask myself, what do I need that day? And when I'm done with that, Jose, I meditate for about 20 minutes. I just sit. 
And when that part is over, I feel like I'm clear and I'm awake. I mean, it's not nightlife for you. No. Jose, first of all, I have two children. One is six and one is four. I adopted them. It was the best moment in my life. But what I realized the best part about having little ones like that is everybody goes night night at the same time. I'm a morning person anyway. I love a sunrise more than I love a sunset. I love the beginnings of things. I feel like it's magical. So I want to ask you a question about raising adult kids because I've got young ones. So how do you parent your kids who are adults now? You learn as you go. I think I have a, a great relationship with my three daughters. Not like we don't have moments of, ah! Yeah, we are far away from a perfect family. But we are a family that love each other. But I'm in this moment that they have a feeling I'm learning more as a grown-up and as a father and as a parent. Well, you're teaching them, obviously, to be of service by being of service yourself. The part of you that is so passionate about causes and helping, that came from somewhere. Where did that come from? Because you've dedicated a big chunk of your life. You could just be cooking in a restaurant and making a ton of money and putting your feet up, but you're not. Yeah, it's many, many reasons why maybe. It's not just one, it's not black and white either. My mom and my dad were nurses. And, and I always saw that as people that they were always there for the people. And the same talent that I used to feed the few, I could use it to feed the many. Jose, thank you. I loved our conversation. It's so good to see you, and I'll see you soon. Until next time. What a great guy. Another icon who's launching a podcast, Isaac Mizrahi. After rising to fame, styling stars like Nicole Kidman, Sarah Jessica Parker, and Deborah Messing, Isaac made his way into millions of homes through his clothing lines with Target and QVC. Now he's taking his talents to a new forum with his podcast, Hello Isaac, gabbing with guests about their paths to success. Isaac stopped by Hoda and Jenna to tease what to expect. See so coming up with a premise for a podcast is some, sometimes tricky because I feel like most of the ideas yeah. are out there and taken, but I love your premise. Oh, right. Well, you know, <laughs> I am not. A, I thought we'll just talk to people and yeah. it would be really fun. But then the people producing it were like, oh, yeah, we need something. So I thought about the thought of failure. I thought, like, why don't we talk yeah. about my favorite subject, <laughs> failure. No, seriously, because I do think that there is a lot to learn from failure. And I feel like everyone goes through it and they, there's a stigma around it. And I feel like we have to encourage it. And I'm not the only person to think this thought, but I think I am one of the few people to have yeah. a podcast about, you know, to talk to people about. Because you think a lot of the people you interview are infallible, like they've done right. no, no, and nothing's ever gone wrong. Right. They've always made it. And that's what they want to talk about. So, like, if you say you want to talk about failure, a lot of times you have to kind of Trojan horse it into yeah, the conversation. Yeah, yeah. Like, hey, was there a time in your life where you did not succeed? Yeah. Let's put it that mm -hmm. way. And it taught you something and it brought you somewhere. Yeah. And everybody just goes on. They love yeah. to, you know what I mean? They really love to kind of expound upon it. Because I think lessons, you know, lessons are a big part mm -hmm. of yeah. success. So you ask two questions to every guest. And your guests are incredible, by the way. Yeah. Andy Cohen. Right. Um, okay. Jesse Tyler Jesse, Ferguson yes, is we coming can name up. Belinda Carlisle. Belinda Carlisle. Carlisle. Are these all Gabby friends? Gabby Sidibe, huh? Are yes, these, they're, they're these are friends. all people I know, yes. Uh -huh. And so now you're my friends, and I'm going to get you Good. Good. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. We're in. <laughs> okay, so you asked two questions, so we're going to flip it sure. and ask oh, okay. you these questions. Uh -oh, what the are first they one is the biggest <laughs> failure, right? What has oh. been your biggest failure, and what have you learned from it? Well, I would say that that was when my doors were shut down in my couturier in 1998. Yeah. And it was devastating, and I thought I would never come back from it, but I did. I came back from it, and it really, I kind of gathered my my head and I thought maybe I should do a different kind of fashion and maybe I should pursue my first love which is music performing, performing. Yeah. exactly yeah, acting you're a performer. performing yeah being you know, crazy when, and but gay when they, and fun. <laughs> which you are the best, the best. <laughs> crazy gay and fun <laughs> <laughs> so, so when they did shut down your line, yeah. did you have self-doubt? Did you say, maybe I wasn't really meant for this? You think? I don't maybe know. Maybe just a little Hoda Some... copy? Come on. 
What do you think? I was devastated. But you were. I was but you devastated. knew you were good because you had yeah. a line. So That's what? Right. And shut a it perfume. Down. Yeah. And right. you were very for a very long time. And it. But it does. It does set you back. I mean, yeah. what if someone said, "Okay, we're shutting the show down." Yeah. What would you do? You're going to go crazy. But wow. you would learn some <laughs> stuff, right? I would. Did you ever have a failure that you learned? A from? ton. Seriously? Yeah, I could. Yeah, I couldn't Jenna? get hired. I mean, I was on the cover of People magazine for drinking <gasps> underage. Boom. You know what I mean? Well, that's but so I punk will... rock. Why didn't that happen to me? I think I'm going to go on a drinking spree after this. That's so what I'm You have for. to have a dad that's president. <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, it doesn't right. really Otherwise work. Otherwise, don't care. That Otherwise, exactly. you don't care. <laughs> All right, so the second question, which is an important one, is what's your second question you ask every guest? About obituaries. Oh, about obituaries. Yeah. Right. What is your obituary? I would think that I, because I'm obsessed with obituaries, that's the first thing do I do. Do you read them in Oh, the paper? darling, I wake up, I go to my front door, I get the New York Times, the paper you version. You get the yes. paper version. I do, yeah, you know? For you. Because it's easier to find the obituaries than the paper version. <laughs> what, so really what do you really do? I'm switch? not kidding. What are you I do, seeking? And I Why go right are you, to the, what are you looking first for? First of all, you know, I just want to see if any of the people I know have died. <laughs> and have because you I want to make sure to send flowers in a note. <laughs> okay, next. <laughs> and then also, I just find it so fabulous. It's like this oh, like this great story about a person's right. life, yeah. you know. And I guess what it meant. Now, of course, my obituary would say something like, he was a renaissance man. Or, <laughs> I hate the phrase renaissance. He did a lot a of stuff savant. really <laughs> well. What about <laughs> savant? <laughs> Yeah. Savant. Okay, I like that. And then he was, what would we say before? Crazy, gay, and fun. Yeah, that would, that be, the would be good. Yes, I think so. You know, so. they always say that people have two things. Someone wrote this. There's the resume you and the eulogy you. Right. It's like the resume you is the thing that you're scrapping for every day, but the eulogy you is the thing that matters. What are right. they going to say at the end? Right. Yeah. And the thing that I fear is that, you know, if I die tomorrow... Ugh, you know, it's like I need to get a few more things in there yeah. that they yeah. can add in my resume or in my actually my eulogy yeah. or my obituary. After the break, we are revisiting Harry Smith's visit to Zach Brown's latest gig, being a summer counselor. Stay with us. Welcome back to Pop Star Plus Rewind. Odds are you've probably heard of the Zac Brown Band, the group that rose to fame through hits like Whatever It Is and Free. But did you know the lead singer is also a camp counselor? Earlier this month, Harry Smith visited Zac at Camp Southern Ground, which brings children from varying backgrounds together to create a lasting community. Take a look at their conversation. Friday morning at Camp Southern Ground. Y'all ready? A counselor plays his guitar. No, I won't be afraid. No, yes, that is Zach Brown. You have just this minute 
finished your first full week as a counselor at your own camp. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How are you doing? I'm doing amazing. Y'all give me this pencil. You know, I'm a camp kid. Camp changed my life. It helped me to see so many things. It helped me watch the change that happens okay. in kids when you put all different kinds of people together. For a week at a time, Zach's camp provides a place where inclusion is intentional. Barriers social, psychological, or intellectual are immaterial. All are welcome. Because the ignorance that exists is usually from being sheltered and hate and those things or whatever. It's usually something that's learned from someone else that's sheltered. They didn't get to be around different kinds of people. They didn't get to realize the gifts that those people have. And so you tear down those walls and the ignorance is gone. You know, some of the kids that come here have never been invited to a birthday party before. Mm. And they get to be surrounded by that the entire time that they're here, you know, and... That love. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's powerful. It's yeah. powerful. And so you plant that seed in them. And so when they go out back into their world, they see diversity differently. They see it with an open heart and with love. Camp Southern Ground has the ropes course, archery tag, and art center. There is also a massive garden where campers literally pick what they eat. If you can teach someone how to love something, they're going to want to go do it. Come fall through spring, the camp is busy with programs for veterans and military families. As his dream for all of this came true, Zach realized something. It's such a God thing. We just happen to be adjacent to an organic farm. <laughs> like, here you go. Yeah, you're not driving this far. No, I'm not. I'm following orders. <laughs> I'm following orders, and that's why it's great, because it's, it's not about me. Back in the woods, there's a treehouse that looks like a horseshoe crab. It seemed like a good place to talk about why Brown has devoted so much time and energy to Southern ground. When you level the playing field to just being human beings, it gives them a personal connection that they have that hits directly home with them for everyone that they see that's different from them from that point on. Those camp kids, after being immersed in that diversity, they're defenders of those people from that point on. Paying it forward is what Brown learned from a camp director years ago. Camp is one of those places where people come with a real true intention that is selfless, that is how to give and share love and understanding and tools with people. And I think our world needs more of that. How was camp for you this week? It was um, quite an experience. I met a lot of different types of people. Amy Sholand was there to pick up her daughter, Emma Rose. Emma, a fourth year camper. She feels normal. She doesn't feel like she's different than everybody else. I bring her here, she likes a sense of independence that she gets to pick and choose and do things without her parents and be in charge of herself. Zach has a song he sings at camp. We're all in this world together. Happiness now, that is the truth. Happiness now, that is the message. And love is the remedy. Love is the remedy. Open up your heart and listen. Love is the remedy. Thank you. As you are sharing that moment, what's going on inside of you? Seeing that magic happen, I've been seeing it happen all week long. Saying goodbye to them is hard because I'm connected to them now. Love you guys. It's always inspiring to see artists give back to communities across the country. When we're back, we're taking a look back at Dan and Shay's recent visit to Studio 1A.
Thanks for sticking with us. Every summer today puts on quite the show with our city summer concert series. Dan and Shay have been a mainstay in the lineup throughout the years. This month they stopped by for another amazing performance. They caught up with the third hour crew on all that's happening in their world. Good to see you guys. Great so to, see, good to see you guys, man. So uh, earlier you guys performed Bigger Houses and, and uh, Save Me the Trouble for the first time in front of an audience. What was that like? I was kind of nervous, honestly. When we went out there to sound check, I had to tell the fans, I was like, okay, guys, you need to sing these songs back to us very loudly. And they did. They did. They were yeah. rocking. They've only been out for, what, like four or five days now. So they were singing them back, and uh, our fans always have our backs. Does that amaze you that in, in four or five days they know the lyrics every to all these word. songs? Our fans have always been amazing like that. I've always been blown away every time. I'm already, like, surprised. I shouldn't be surprised at this point that they learn them so quickly. I remember there was a time that we put out, I was actually speechless. Uh, whenever Speechless had come out, it had been literally out for, I think, the night. And yeah. we played a show the next day, and there was just everybody knew every single lyric. That's we were amazing. just like, that's a big part of why we why we picked that as a single because the reaction. Cool. And they do that on every song. Somebody though. on our team's paying them to learn the lyrics. <laughs> <laughs> just a dollar <laughs> passing yeah. around. Yes. Make the guys feel good. Yeah. <laughs> you guys have performed in like every conceivable Today Show space. I, I, next time it'll be backstage, behind the scenes, perfect, inside, outside. But I was trying to remember the last time you guys did outside was around the time of your arena tour in 2021, and it was a huge success. But you guys have not been shy about talking about how it took a toll on the two of you. I, I wondered what you guys learned from that experience. Yeah, it was that was a tough couple years for us. You know, we had been a band for almost 10 years at that point, and, you know, you throw COVID in there, which is a crazy couple of years, and being in a duo is very difficult. It's like a marriage. Mm -hmm. If you don't go out of your way to work on it and nurture that relationship, things can fall apart. Mm -hmm. And just oh, like... that's how you do it? Oh, good. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's a little bit of guys. Yeah, here we okay, go. Okay, thank you. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's something that we realized that we needed to spend more time focusing on. And, you know, after 10 years, we were like, we've got an amazing fan base. We owe it to them to get ourselves right personally, get ourselves our relationship right. We sat down one night, hashed everything out, and we, we made a goal, you know, moving forward. We want to spend a few days at least with each other. If we're not on the road, get back in the room, write songs. Let's hang out like we did 10 years ago when we met, because that's where the magic was. And if you don't go out of your way to do that, things can go by the wayside, and we did. And it was one of the most incredible few months of my entire life. You know, we wrote, accidentally wrote, I think our best album of our career wow. because of that. And our relationship is stronger than it's ever been. And yeah. I think when the fans hear this album, I think they're gonna, whether they're listening for it or not, gonna be able to hear that. Yeah, how much influence did that whole period of, of your friendship play into this album? I think, I mean, everything that you go through kind of bleeds into the music when it's genuine. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that there's traces of that all through this album. And uh, the biggest thing that I feel like we have on this this entire project is it's continuity. It's all, it's all very connected uh, to one another and you can feel it through the music. And I think you can feel kind of where we got to in our relationship mm -hmm. through the music. And there's just something that's intangible that you can't quite describe, but right. we've been doing this for a long time and we know when something is genuine and when it's not. Mm -hmm. And in our fans know that and people know that. And I think there's been such a big reaction to songs like Save Me the Trouble and Heartbreak on the Map and Bigger Houses especially uh, because they know it's genuine and, and whenever we, yeah. we sing it, you know, they can, they can feel that we believe that we're, you know, when we're, we believe what we're singing. Mm -hmm. And that's an important Makes thing uh, whenever you, yeah, it's, it's kind of crazy how much that really plays a part mm -hmm. in it. So very, very exciting stuff to be a part of all of this. Yeah. It's just incredible. Your youngest is, I think, six months old now. Yeah. Uh, I, I travel all the time. Jacob travels all the time. H how do you guys deal with that and also kind of, you know, look after the family. It's kind of crazy, you know, you definitely have to, I mean, this was kind of a part of Dan and I's journey of making mm -hmm. sure that you know, that's been my focus over the last couple of years is living in the now. Mm -hmm. You know, I feel like I've spent my whole life looking forward or, you know, to something to come or, you know, looking back on something and being like, man, that was, those were the glory days, you know, and I feel like you really have to live in the moment and be present. And mm -hmm. every time that, uh, even if it's a little bit of time that I get to spend with my, t my family, we make sure that it is real time and I put down my phone and, you know, I think we all can work on that. It's not <laughs> something that we ever get right 100% of the time. And I think that uh, it's just all about your focus and making sure that we're living in the now because this is all we're going to have is this okay. moment right here. And uh, and we can't look back and can't look too far ahead. We have to appreciate the moments that we get like this one. With, with yeah, well, and yeah. we always love when you're here and yeah. we love the idea that you guys are going to be the first duo coaching pair ever on The Voice. We're so <laughs> pumped. It's crazy. Wait, I'm so this you is, guys explain. Well, look at this. This is the first picture. Oh, this, this is an actual that picture. Real? That's real? That's it. Yeah. That's a real we one. haven't seen a picture of that yet. <laughs> Two, <laughs> adjoining, I'm saving it for this wow. moment. Two adjoining chairs with one buzzer? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Who presses the buzzer? built in comedy. It's perfect. Uh, yeah. We'll see. <laughs> Tune into the voice. This is going to start a new fight. Right. Exactly. This is going to be the demise of Dan and Shay right here. <laughs>
Such good guys. Well, that wraps it up for today's episode of Pop Start Plus Rewind. Thanks so much for hanging with me and have a great weekend. Nothing better on a dreary winter day than some warm comfort food, right? Well, we got mm -hmm. a great one for you today, folks. Jocelyn Delk Adams, mm -hmm. she's back with us. She's the author of Everyday Grand. Jocelyn, welcome back. Good morning. I know. Hey, it's been so long, guys. Oh, it's it's good been to see so you. long. Thank you. What are we making? Meal you're making? Lemony chicken mm, rice casserole. With chicken thighs. Oh, yes. With chicken thighs, because you know it makes a difference. Yes, it does. It does. Right? Makes them nice and juicy. So we're going to start by dredging our chicken thighs. We've got some flour here. I'm going to add in some parsley. Parmesan. Mm, yeah, I've got wow. onion and garlic powder. You're like, ooh, and then of course some lemon zest. You know okay. how to, you know how to zest it. Okay, let me see. Now. Let me see this. Let me see these skills. Hey, this is right a woodworker here. right here. Yeah. 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 How much do you? How much do you want? All right, just oh, you like how much? You're like, I'll be over here all on. day, right? Okay, Come that's on. pretty good. That's pretty sure. good. All right, I'll give you more. I'll give you more. All right, all right, all right. I'm putting you to work here. We're gonna whisk that up, and then we're gonna dredge these. Okay, we're just gonna add this right in. And why is it so important to dredge? Well, we want to get that nice coating. It's going to okay. give us like that nice crisp coating. Mm. I'm going to get it in that flour. Does that help thicken up the sauce? Well, it's pour also it going to thicken it? up the sauce too, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And could then you we're going to add almond flour if you want. Of course okay. you could. Oh, come on. You know, <laughs> you know. And we're going to put this right into our oil. You can definitely play around. You can even mm -hmm. use, you know, any type of gluten-free flour. Okay. If and that's you like, like to a, start skin side down? Yeah, I do too. I do. I like to, crisp to get that nice crisp. crisp it up. Yeah, we're going to get that crispy. And then we're going to work on our casserole dish. Do you have to cook it through in the pan? Well, you don't because okay. we're also going to throw it in the oven Perfect. too. So okay. we just want to get it browned and mm -hmm. then we can get it in the oven. Okay. So we've got some cream of chicken. You want to whisk okay, this sure. up for me? Okay. And then I've got cream some of chicken stock. There you go. Yeah. Because you know nothing's more comforting than yeah. some yeah. Cream yeah. Of chicken yeah. soup, yeah. right? So. Got some chicken add, stock there. Yep. And then I've got our rice that was oh. going to go right okay. in here. And then awesome. I've got some garlic, too. I'm going to pop that okay. in. Well. Yeah, because we love garlic. And then down here, of course, you can see that our our um, our chicken thighs are mm, ready. Right. And then this is oh when gosh. we're just going to add this right into our dish. Oh, oh, Goes right in. Oh, yeah. Oh, my goodness. You already this tasted is, it, oh, Craig you? started it. This you is already worth making. did it. I know you did. This is That's, worth oh making tonight. Yeah, look, you're going to do it, aren't you? Oh, my goodness. Chicken up, goes so in. So you just put it in there. Yep. So it's just a one dish. Pop this oh, in. That is. Pop this in. And then how long in. are you going to put that in the oven for? We're going to put this in the oven for about 40 to 50 minutes. And then oh my, usually oh we gosh. cover it mm -hmm. with foil because we want to make sure all that rice gets really tender. Oh, oh, Y'all over there are killing my dish, right? Y'all wow. know how oh, I do. Wow. All right. Oh, wow. And then the lemon goes on top because oh it's so beautiful. So you cook it with the lemon there. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. to get a little oh, bit more of that How long do you bake it? She told you you about your eating. What's going on? I can't remember. Oh my God. So yeah, this goes in. You put the foil over the top, mm -hmm. bake it for about 40 to 50, then take it off if you want to brown it oh a little God. more for about 10 minutes, and then you're ready to serve. Oh, oh, you got an delicious. air fryer salmon. I sure do. Four Wait, this ingredients. Is an air fryer? Yes, four ingredients. Because yeah. we were talking about the air fryer, how it's like the perfect okay. appliance. If you want to add another appliance? Yeah. I've never made salmon you know, in the air fryer. So easy. How easy is it? So easy. What are these like, so easy? And it's done really quickly, oh, too. Great. Four ingredients. Okay, what's that's the it. So I've got some oh soy God. sauce mm -hmm. in there. i got some honey. Ooh, okay. Okay, mm -hmm. let me see. What else do I have in there? I can't that's even remember what comes out. Yeah. Oh, that's a garnish. Mm -hmm. And then you just drop it in the air mm. fryer for about like 10 minutes. But sometimes mm. it depends on your air fryer. Sometimes it cooks really quickly. Mm. But I love the air fryer because it gets that nice crisp skin mm. at the top. Oh this is God. delicious. Come on. Oh, well done. All right. I like to it's make great. salmon skin bacon. Oh, yeah. well, oh, I like that. What do you do? You just just put it on. Just take some of the skin off the. In fact, I go to the I go to my fishmonger and yeah. you know he gives me extra. He goes, a lot of people don't like so to his I love this skin. It's so good. He goes to his fishmonger. Yeah. So I want two for two on this. You guys love them. We are going to make a mashup that you didn't realize you needed. Pizza meatloaf. Mm, here to show us how is Jocelyn Delk Adams, founder of Grand Baby Cakes and author of Everyday Grand. Which you can buy right now, Everyday mm -hmm. Grand. Uh, this is a heck of a concept. Yeah. I know, right? Because my kid loves pizza. It's like, what's for breakfast? Pizza. Yes. Right. Like, what do you want for dessert? Pizza. pizza. Everything. So I was like, I've got to make pizza variations. Right. Of okay. like all so this the is the food. best of meatloaf with a pizza. Exactly, with that pizza twist. Okay. So I'm going to start with some pepperoni because okay. she loves pepperoni. My daughter right. loves pepperoni. So I'm just going to just dice it up. You can make it as small as as big as you like. Mm -hmm. You like a lot of texture. You can make it bigger. So you want 
lot smaller, blend it in, and then like a meatloaf, we just start adding that stuff together, add the pepperoni right? to the ground beef. Yep. Wow. Or ground and it's going to give that, yeah, ground That's turkey. Meat on ground, meat. Meat on meat. It's a meat It's a meat. Meat. It's a <laughs> That's, yes. <laughs> Meat lovers will love this, right? Okay. So pepperoni in there. I've got some garlic okay. going in there. Mm -hmm. Got some parsley. And then you can throw those eggs in for, for me. The binder? Yep, get it in there. Okay. Gotta bind it up. And then we've got some Italian breadcrumbs okay. here. Yeah. Gotta get that in there. And then we've got some seasonings. We've got some oregano. We've got um, some seasoning salt. We've got some black pepper. It's like pepper. the pizza part of yeah, it. Yeah, the pizza part. And okay. then we've got some milk as well. Okay. Just, Just whole milk. Whole, whole thing. You can use whatever milk you okay. want. Okay. If you want to use like a coconut milk, if you want to use something like, like can you soda over milk. stir this too much? Well, I like to just make sure everything's that. combined mm -hmm. as much as possible. Also, you can play around with the toppings, like yeah. if you like olives, if you want to throw oh. mushrooms in mm -hmm. here, okay. like you can do that too. And then we get that all stirred up, and then we get it into our loaf pan. Okay. This is the fun part: is I like to create a well right oh. in the center. And throw cheese. Oh, well, in the now we're talking. Is this mozzarella? Yes. Oh, my God. Yes. I mean, it's a pizza meatloaf. Okay. We're okay. Cheese, now the right? sauce. Yes. Now the sauce. So to make this easy, like people can buy like a pizza sauce mm -hmm. like at the grocery store, right. and then I like to doctor it up. Just add some additional sure. seasonings okay. in there. Got some garlic powder. Okay. Got some oregano, some basil, mm -hmm. and got some parsley. And then for a little kick, I've got some red pepper. Red pepper. Ah, there you go. Is that yep. basil? Yep. Okay. All right. Just get okay. that in there, and then you're going to stir it up. Now, if you don't have time, just grab Buy the, the sauce. Right. right. Keep it moving. All right. This can still be a really easy thing. You're going to bake it. All that now, cheese cover, is going to ooze uh, in the center. Where do you cover, do you cover this up just so, with the sauce? So, yeah, if you have some ex uh, extra meat, you can just start ah. flipping it over the top. Mm -hmm. We're going to not do it with the Oh, onions. I see. Yeah. Okay. And then it covers the well, and right. then you bake it up, Look and then this. the cheese, like, just melts in the center when it oh, comes out goodness. of the oven. Oh, just the presentation. Alone. Yeah, oh, that's yeah. Fun. Yeah. it's drizzle. so fun. And yes. then you just drizzle the sauce on it. And then you it? just drizzle the sauce and, and serve it with I'll it. Try it. Come on, get into wow. it now. Here we go. That's great. Isn't it so mm. young? What a great concept. Mm. Yes. And this is good for like football too. Like oh, sure. Is, right? Mm. That's really good. You can make little individual ones. Yes, you those. can make little individual oh, ones. Fantastic. Serve them up. It's so easy. And that's really good, good Thank you, Jocelyn. <laughs> Cold temperatures call for a much needed comfort food in the home. So we brought in Jocelyn Delk Adams, author of Everyday Grand, to share a delicious, cozy winter meal. Happy New Year, Jocelyn. Great Thank to have you, you here. Happy got the New Oscar Year. nominations are happening right this now. This is like my Christmas day. Yeah, I have going no on. idea how much I enjoy Oscar nominations. We make We're going to have them for house. us in a few minutes. Delicious. Well, let's Thank get you. to that delicious meal. What, what are you making for us? <laughs> All right, so we are going to do some rotisserie chicken stuffed shells. Love and it. we start with just a rough chop of our garlic. We want to just cut off that stem and then just go down this like really quickly. So when you said rotisserie, I'm thinking, do I have to make a chicken or can you just buy a rotisserie chicken? The yes, market, you or? can just buy a rotisserie chicken. It makes it so much okay. easier instead of just making it your own. 
cut all the time. So you got so we're your gonna garlic. start working on the sauce. Yeah, so we're gonna do a rough chop of that and then okay. we're gonna get to the sauce. So we're gonna add in some heavy cream. Oh, nice, that nice sizzle. Ooh. Then we're gonna add in some parm because okay. we wanna make this thick and creamy, right? We've got some Creole seasoning. That's Ooh, where you're getting like that, that kick. Ooh. Creole like that. seasoning and like some this. Italian seasoning. So it's kind of like a blend, it's a mashup, right? Beautiful. And we're gonna whisk that together and we're gonna actually bring that to a simmer so we can get that to get nice okay. and thick. We'll work on that. Then we're gonna work on this rotisserie chicken. You can easily shred this with like two forks. You can use your hands. Or I have a nice trick. I like to use a hand mixer. Oh, wow. Yes. Get a big bowl, throw that chicken in, and use the hand mixer. And, and it then meat just minutes. falls off the bone? Falls off, shreds wow. it perfectly, wow. does it in a couple minutes. It's so crazy oh easy. God. Yes, I have like a oh, quick TikTok on it, too. I'm so you have yeah. your sauce, you have your, your chicken's been pulled off the pulled bone. Pulled off the bone, you've got this. And now this. everything sits for a second yes. while you make the piping. Yes, so we got to make the sits. filling. So we're going to add our chicken into some mm -hmm. ricotta. We've got mm -hmm. some broccoli, so we can get some veggies yeah. in here. Mm -hmm. I also like to sub in some, you know, spinach. Spinach, if you want to add that into, mm -hmm. we've got some onions, we've got some more parm because you know, hey, we got to add that into. This is already giving meal. me like broccoli cheese vibes, yeah. which is a comfort food when it's, it's cold out. World, yes, yeah. and then I add in a little bit more creole. We're gonna mix that Why all not? together, and Why you're gonna not? get that nice and smooth. Yes, and then you are. here we've got our fillings. So. How, do, how do me, Craig, and Al do this? this okay, come <laughs> on, come on, it's like intimidation pipe factor. Cupcakes, yes. come on. When you got kids, Piping. you gotta pipe some cupcakes. Tell them about the Ziploc trick. Yes. Oh, yes. So, okay, yeah. most people don't have like a piping bag no. at home. Right. You can get one of these bags, the resealable bags. You just snip off the end oh, okay. once you've added well, now, in everything, see, and I then asked. it just comes right mm -hmm. out. So really that awesome. that we can do that. We can handle got that. that at home, right? Uh -huh. So you want you want to you want to try? You yeah, can say yes, that. Let's yeah. Do it. Okay, you're just gonna fill this. You've already like um, you know cooked your spinach or your pasta, and you're just gonna pipe this right inside. You want to try it? Yep, I sure do. Okay, go for it. I'm telling you, so easy. Fill the treasure. Or if you get really into Intimidated, Craig. You can okay. use a spoon. Okay, good time. All right. Play it easy. And then what, Jocelyn? How long you yeah. put these Yeah. So cook once we have or? those, yeah. So once we have those filled, we're gonna put that right on top of can our. Ask a dumb question. Are those <laughs> is those pasta shells? Are they already pre-cooked? Yeah. So we okay. cook them already. Right, okay. They're ready to go. Okay. We've let them kind of come to room question. temperature, okay. no, and then we're adding them right on top of the oh, sauce that we prepped good. earlier. Yeah. So we're gonna pop these in. We're gonna add some cheese right on top and bake them for about 20 minutes till it's nice and bubbly and delicious. Wow. You know what? It's also good for kids because mm. it's delicious, but you hit a little broccoli. I know. Yeah. I don't like that. I just throw as much green in there as possible. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, it's fun. Colors, it also has like. Know. Did you make this ahead of time? Yes, you can totally prep this ahead of time. Put this in the refrigerator and then bake it off. It has like a little bit of a guilt-free thing to it too. It doesn't feel mm -hmm. too bad like you're eating a yeah, giant but it's lasagna nice and cozy too, right? Oh, exactly. Delicious. And then you've got the chicken, so it's a little lighter. Thank, Thank you, you go, so John. much. Thank More you. recipes in the next hour, by the way. Joining us this morning. Jocelyn Delk Adams, founder of Grand Baby Cakes, also the author of Everyday Grand, which, oh, by the way, is available for pre-order as we speak. Sure is. And just, yeah. Jocelyn is here to share her spin on a classic and easy weeknight dish Welcome back. And you're going to help me. I am going I am going to help this morning. <laughs> so tortilla chip casserole could not be easier. Tortilla you can get the kids involved. Casserole. You can even do this, okay? Because I know you can be, <laughs> I know you can be cooking challenge. So we're going to get True. this together. So to start, I'm going to show you how we're going to dice up these like bell peppers, okay. right? You're going to get these strips, just kind of get them together really easily, and then just go down to create like these small little dices, okay. right? Really easy. Just gather all that. And that's all you Even I do. can do that, Josh. Yeah, you can do that. You can do that. Yeah. See, you're okay. winning already. Mm -hmm. So we're going to start on our meat mixture. I've got some ground beef here. Going to add this to some olive oil. You hear that nice sizzle. And I assume you could easily swap that out with turkey or yeah, you can even ground turkey, chicken. Even ground chicken. <laughs> okay. Yep, whatever you got is fine. And then I'm going to add in our bell pepper here. Mm -hmm. And then can you add in that diced onion yes, and some garlic yes, for me? So that's it. That's pretty that's simple it. so far. So yeah, you got to start cooking this down. You're going to brown it. How much garlic is that? Uh, I mean, hey, it's I love garlic. Okay. All right, add it in, all right? Oh, yes, add as much as you want in there. And then this is when we get into the flavors. Like, we're going to add in two salsas. So if you have Taco have Tuesday it. tonight, of course, you yes. might have some leftover salsas. Mm -hmm. Add in the red and the green. That's going to oh. give us ample flavor like here. Chunky one, yeah, like you can grab the chunky one, Yeah, you can grab the chunky for that chunky. texture. Yeah. You take so your salsa seriously. 
out there. I do. <laughs> you can't play around with salsa, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. We're going to add in this salsa, and then we're going to oh, add in some really taco good. seasoning. So just store-bought taco store seasoning? Store-bought, wow. get it in the little Easy. packet, and just toss it all together mm -hmm. with some chicken stock. Chicken stock. What's oh, the word, Al? It's very good. Mm -hmm. really good. So yummy, Crunchy, right? So yummy. Oh, Sweet. my gosh. So you're going to cook this together. This is our swap. Hello, this the magic of TV. Okay. Yep, looks really good. You're going to let that kind of thicken up into this. And then we're going to start adding in our additional texture. We've got Is that cream of mushroom? It is. Oh, I love that. I know. It it's makes it so creamy. For everything. Oh, you I throw it into that. everything. We it's throw it into soup. everything at my home. Yeah. Everything. Cream, cream of mushroom, mushroom soup. soup. Oh, yeah. Just oh, yeah. throw it into everything. Wow. It makes everything so much better. Why do you like it so much? What the, so um, it's so creamy. It adds mm. so much richness along with like the sour cream mm. in this. It mm -hmm. really makes that texture so great. Yeah. And I love anything with mushroom too. We're going to add in some black beans too. Grab that, add that in, and of course the sour cream I was talking about. Mm -hmm. Throw that in too for that extra richness and that tang. Ooh, and then we're gonna like add in some cheese. cheese. Yep, get that in there. Yeah. And we're gonna stir that together. Oh, cool. Oh, nice. And then this yeah. is when you get the kids involved, or mm -hmm. you can get rid of like your morning aggression. I'm gonna have you like, <laughs> you know, just go for oh, it. And yeah, then, you know, oh, get that get out. The kids. This get the kids. I know. He's like, I'm taking that over. Yeah. Right. You're gonna crunch oh, that so this together. Is cool. This goes in the pan. Goes in. And you then can, you build it. Yeah. Yeah, and then you just start building it. And this is where we get into our casserole. It's almost like a lasagna. You're going to just layer it up. Oh. The mm. so oh, bottom that's... layer is Doritos or whatever yeah. your corn chip is? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. you, you can, can do, do the Frito. cheesy ones. Mm. Fritos. Mm. Fritos. Mm. Like whatever your faves are. Oh, yeah. The flaming Hot. Mm. You know, get oh, some spice like in there. Like whatever you love. Like you can really adapt this and make this into whatever this is really you like. Good. It's almost yeah. like a layered dip. Yeah, mm -hmm. it is. Really and like, like you bake it off and you mm. get all those textures. You get the crunch. Oh, it's you get so that yummy. How long do you bake it? About 30 minutes. Okay. And then you're going to add some cheese on top. Don't add the cheese at the beginning and put the foil over it because it'll, it'll stick, stick to, to the, the foil. foil. Oh, God. Yeah. Oh. So do it. My take the foil this. off this and then great. just add the cheese and then let it get off. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then it comes it's out. So I'm going to taste it. Yeah, Tell oh us about this new cookbook. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh my gosh. It's called Everyday Grand yeah. and it's all about just mm -hmm. loving and enjoying every single moment of life. So like great. I wanted to just make a book that just made everyone happy, mm -hmm. right? Finding so much joy and just beyond just holidays, like you got a good hair yeah. day, celebrate. celebrate. Yeah. Got the book is hey, terrific. Ooh, thank you. And Al endorsed it. I was so grateful to awesome. him. I mean, like, hey, you changed the tire, celebrate. That's good. I Your four year old's gonna love this. <laughs> yeah, she loves it. Thank it's you, so good. Thank, <laughs> thank you. Jocelyn. Jocelyn, love thank it. you again. <laughs>
get his Make Ahead Monday desserts on the menu with two great recipes that'll earn you brownie points. We've got Jocelyn Delk Adams from Grand Baby Case. Good morning, Jocelyn. Good morning. How are you today? Well, great. I'm going to be all the better for this <laughs> perfect brownie recipe. Let's get started yes. on the batter. Yes, so I've got some melted butter in my mixer here, and I'm going to add in two sugars. This is why these are so perfect, because they have that great chewy consistency. Mm -hmm. So I love to use both granulated sugar and brown sugar. Mm. Yum. Dark brown going. or light like yeah. brown sugar? You know what? If you really want to go chewy, you go dark brown. If you want like a nice sort of kind of in-between balance, then go with the lighter. Mm. Okay. I didn't know yeah, so I want to get that mixed really, really well. And then I'm going to start adding in my eggs. I've got two eggs and their room temperature. That's very important. And I'm going to add them in one at a time into our batter. Hmm. Jocelyn, as you're making these, I'm, I made these yes. when you were supposed to be on a couple weeks ago, but had a power yeah. outage or something. And, and I made them because they sounded so good. And I'm noticing there's a couple things that I didn't quite do right. And I loved them the first time, so I can't wait to do it again. And you say, like, know, whisking I mean, the eggs is important. It's like a foolproof recipe, pretty much. Like, yes, the whisking of the eggs. I find that people love that crackly top on a brownie. Mm -hmm. And the whisking of the eggs is so key to that. If you whisk them really, really, really well, like take some time with that, you'll get that perfect, gorgeous, crackly top. And then you put in the flour, right? I didn't even realize you can mm -hmm. overmix flour, but I guess you can. Yes, you can, because as soon as you start to get that flour in, that's when you're going to activate your gluten, right? And we don't want tough brownies. We want to make sure that we just get it in just enough to where it's kind of in the batter and it's smooth mm. enough and then stop. You're like, not worried pull about away clumps? And you're done. Yeah, you don't want to worry too much about crumbs. You mm. want it to be nice and smooth, but I find that people sort of just overdo it. They're like, mm. I got to get it like perfect, mm -hmm. perfect, perfect, perfect. And it's like, you don't need to worry about that. It's and, perfectly and, fine to just do it that way. And Jocelyn, really quickly, put them in the pan <laughs> to make sure they come out clean. What do you do with the pan? Ah, yes. So, lovely tip here. I love to add my parchment right into the pan. And here is my swap out of my batter. And this actually helps. So, like, when you're done with the baking, you can oh, pull yeah. this right Ooh. out of your pan Perfect. without having to, like, go through all the crazy messiness. That's yummy. And then we're making ice yeah. cream. So, are we making ice cream? Yeah, after you make the perfect brownie, yes, you're making it even are. better. <laughs> Yeah, so like if, if you have any leftovers and that's something that I find like I usually don't like people eat my brownies say, and then they're gone in like two seconds brownies. and I'm like, hey, <laughs> right, exactly. Like if you actually have leftover brownies, then this is like a fun thing to do. I've got two types of ice cream here and I just grab some of my like two pieces of brownie or mm -hmm. you can split them in half if right. you like a thinner consistency and I just grab an ice cream scoop. Mm. Uh, Add right to the center oh, of this baby. Wow. It looks good. Jocelyn, you are living right. You look so beautiful this morning. Can as, I just tell you with that yellow? You. Thank you. Seriously. Hey, Jocelyn, really quickly. The brownie sandwich. <laughs> could, you, could you make twice the batter uh, and freeze the brownies after they're baked? Well, what I do is I take the leftovers and I just, whenever I have them, I take two pieces of brownie or I split a brownie in half mm. and then I just add the ice cream right to the center. All right. There you go. Jocelyn, thanks They're so delicious much. delicious Always brownies. great to see you. Thank you so much. Okie doke. For these recipes, head to today.com slash food.
Baby Cakes founder and our pal Jocelyn De Delk Adams is here to share the sweet and simple recipe. We don't care if it's winter. We want key lime pie. <laughs> key lime pie. Yes. yes. <laughs> okay. We love key lime pie and you're saying cook it all year long. Who cares? Bake it. Oh my gosh, we make it for Christmas, we make it for Thanksgiving, like instead of like the traditional pumpkin, you know, we also have this next to the sweet potato pie, okay, because my dad absolutely adores it, so I've got to make it year round. All right, the best part I always think of a key lime pie is the crust. Yes, the crust has got to be on point. Give me a graham so get cracker. Us started. Oh my God, yes, I agree. So I've got some graham cracker crumbs. Mm. You can also just buy some graham crackers and grind them up in your food processor. I've got a little sugar, cause you know, we're getting sweet here. Mm -hmm. And then I've got some melted butter. Mm. And I'm just gonna do a quick whisk and get those all combined. And that's our crust. How easy was that, easy. right? Easy. Yes. So I'm gonna mix that all together, let that kind of become like wet sand, mm -hmm. like that kind of consistency. Mm -hmm. And then I'm gonna pour that right into our pie that. plate, which mm. I've also we like sprayed with a nonstick spray. Simple. Yeah, non spray. just get okay. that in there. Okay. Yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. And then I'm just gonna start patting down. You can pat down with your hands. You can also use like a measuring mm. cup and also get that really smooth in there. Uh -huh. This is what I like to yeah, do. That's so easy. it looks a little bit, you know, more professional and too how do you, on the side. Oh, there, you get it up by pushing it up like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you just start pushing it up the sides. Okay, yep. so we've got our crust. Yeah. Yeah. to bake it first, is that true? Yeah, so I like to bake mine for about maybe like 10 minutes just to kind of get like a nice kind of golden color on the outside. Mm -hmm. And it also kind of sets it up a little bit more too. Okay. So we're going to pretend like we baked this one. Okay. And we're going to get to our filling like really oh, quickly. Simple. You can you just did get it this together. I know. Okay. Hey, speed, <laughs> speed here. We got to play the TV game, so we got to go fast. Okay. So I'm going to get to our filling. I've got some sweetened condensed milk here. Mm, I'm going to add that right that. into, oh, yeah, thick, right? I love thick. the hums. Like, oh, thick, mm, thick. That. It's luscious. It's mm. creamy. This is like that secret weapon in your key lime pie that gives it that beautiful, luscious consistency. Okay. And I've got some egg yolks. Mm -hmm. We're yolk. going to skip the, the whites. We're going to just the egg yolks. going to make it super rich and delicious and actually like a nice, moist texture. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to add in just two more ingredients. Of course, our key lime juice. Yes. How much, Wrap how this much, at the grocery you store. You, you can buy key yeah. lime juice at the grocery yeah. store? Easily, right on the shelves. Or if you want to turn this into like a lemon, you know, baked pie, oh, you can easily use lemon juice too. Yeah. Can I ask a dumb it's question? It's great that way too. Is, is key yeah. lime juice different lime than juice? lime juice? Is it just lime juice? It totally is. No, it is. There are different key limes. They're like the little small limes that you'll see, those specialty limes, versus like those bigger limes that you see in the grocery so store. When so you, the key limes, it would take you a long time to juice all those. You have to way. look for the actual key lime juice. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Key lime juice. Got you want to grab that instead okay. of the lime juice. Okay. That okay. Thank you. The store. Thank you. And then finally, just a little vanilla. Oh, yummy. And I'm just going to whisk all that together until it combines and it takes like a couple seconds. Mm -hmm. oh, and then how do you yeah. make it green? You Is don't it make green? it green. So when oh, you, you see people with people like the green yeah. ones, yeah. they've added That's like food coloring, food coloring oh. to that. Oh. Yeah, that is I not that. like a traditional, like real key Did you lime think pie. We don't play around with that. I oh. sort of like it just like that, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is how you do it, right? This is the consistency. <laughs> this is the look. This is what you want. And we're going to pour oh, that oh, right oh, into. Oh, oh, look at that. Look at, oh, look yeah. at Beautiful. Look at that. I just like to watch yeah. the pouring. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I wish I could lick that. <laughs> I know it has it things in it. It is kind of seductive. It okay, is beautiful. Well, I mean, do? hey, we got Valentine's Day coming up, right? And you bake that, and baby? And then if you... Yeah, you bake this baby. If you have like a deeper pan, just maybe double the filling yeah. totally mm -hmm. up to you. And then if you want to do this beautiful variation that I have here, this is my raspberry Ooh, pretty. key lime pie. Wow. It's gorgeous, right? And, and you just really add a little pops. whipped cream on top? Yeah, I just add a little whipped cream on top. Here, I just use some melted raspberry jam and I kind of just spoon it over. Mm, make it marble. Just drizzle. Uh -huh. Yeah, and then and it just adds something special to it. Or you can bake as how, is. How long do you bake it, And then it, I just kind of just. Uh, you bake for about 10, 
15 minutes okay, 15. max, Easy. and then it comes out like this. Can we oh. see? There's Beautiful. our, there's our traditional Jocelyn. key thank lime pie. You. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> Grand baby cakes rocks. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jocelyn. Yes, for, thank you. Thank you. Mm. And for this recipe, head today.com slash food. Hey guys, welcome to The Boost. You know summer is in high gear when Shark Week makes a splash, and today we're diving deep with the fiercest fish in the sea. But first up, it's Baby Shark. Don't worry, you're not gonna have that song stuck in your head all day long. We're gonna head down south to South Carolina, where a team of marine biologists and researchers are making sure these animals can thrive for generations. In the morning quiet of South Carolina's low country, there's work to be done. All right, let's see what we got. Marine biologist Brian Frazier and a team of researchers conduct the 25th annual survey of baby sharks. Using gill nets, a drum line, and long lines baited with mackerel. This looks like a pretty big piece of bait for a baby shark. Well, these, these baby sharks are, you know, they're a little bigger than you think, and, and, they're, and they're definitely hungry. 45 miles north of Charleston, from these estuaries, nature's nurseries, we got a baby shark. Got a baby shark. they pulled the infant versions of the creatures oh, we here. fear. They're here because there's just abundant prey for them. How long do baby sharks stay in this estuary? Most of them are only here for about four months. With the precision of a NASCAR pit crew, so as oh. not to stress the babies, lots of fine tooth. They bring up the sharks. Partly healed, female. Record the sex age length 457, 573. Tag the dorsal fin where it doesn't hurt. Tag number 72651. Then back in the water they go, all in under a minute. What are the headlines so far from this year's survey? You know, business as usual, right? Shark populations are continuing to rebound, so we're seeing good numbers this year. All the species that should be are here, and, and that's a good thing. On this trip, they brought in six different species with a little help. So this is a female sandbar shark. Uh -huh. um, How old? You, so this, think? you can barely see the umbilical yeah. scar right there. So this one is probably about three weeks old. You can tell it's a female. She doesn't have claspers there. Uh -huh. And this is one of the slowest growing species we have in South Carolina. How, how big will she eventually get to be? She will get to about seven to, to eight feet. Wow. Um, but it's gonna take her about 15 years to mature. But the vast majority were fine tooth sharks. Brian, coming in hot. Yep. All right. I like it. Male. Oh, yep, and he's doing feisty. I like it. He's, uh, well healed. Is that one more fine tooth? Got him. All right. Yep. All right, it's a male. Um, well healed. The most eye catching, the scalloped hammerhead. So this guy is probably about a month old. You know, James is tagged, let this little guy here. James is Dr. James Sulikowski of Oregon State. We're gonna release his life a little hammer. Look at him go. On the East Coast to see the results of his satellite birth tag, revealing where the sharks have their pups. This pregnant hammerhead swam from Cape Hatteras, North Carolina to South Carolina to give birth. We're finding that these large sharks are giving birth in these really coastal areas. So as these areas change, you know, with climate um, and urbanization, we need to know where those sharks are so we can interact uh, better as human beings. Can sharks and people coexist in the ocean? I hope so. The ocean is the shark's home and we are intruders into their homes. We need them to have a healthy ocean. Now to a marine biologist who gets up close and personal with the apex predator, sharing all she's learned about sharks. Underwater off the coast of Oahu is where you'll find Andriana Fergola, a marine biologist and photographer who has no fear diving right in with sharks. The moment you realize something's behind you. 
the Miami native says she's been fascinated with the apex predators ever since she was little. Now, the 29-year-old wants the world to see just how remarkable sharks are. Fergola sharing her latest encounters on social media with her nearly 2 million followers on TikTok. Her videos capture all the incredible raw moments deep in the ocean and show just how close she can get with Mako sharks. Galapagos and tiger sharks, some as big as 16 feet. This post alone racking up more than 33 million views on TikTok. Through her content, Fergola hopes to change the way we view sharks and teach people about their behavior. After I make this loud splash, these two sharks rush right over to me. The best thing to do in this scenario is to stand your ground and make eye contact with the shark. And as soon as I do that here, you can see that she loses interest in me. She says better understanding the animals could help prevent attacks in the future. Oh, Adriana, wow. you're a courageous <laughs> one. Yes, Good morning. Are. Nice to have you here. Good morning. Thanks for having me. How did this fascination with sharks begin? I started diving when I was really young. I mean, I started snorkeling when I don't even know. I was probably like four years old, really, really young. and. I've always found them really fascinating because of that misperception people have and even when I was really little that was always my most excited thing to see when I would go diving so I don't know I've always found a really strong interest in predators. Well we always do so many stories on shark attacks those are those seem to dominate the headlines right. and obviously whenever you see one or hear about a shark everyone's panicking. You have nerves of steel. <laughs> These things are right next to you. You're actually reaching out to them. How is it that you can stay that calm well it definitely comes with practice and you know that experience I would not obviously your first time getting in the water you're not gonna be like oh I'm gonna redirect a shark or be doing anything like that but um, just building in learning that knowledge on what their behavior kind of shows learning what their cues are and that's really what you were really redirecting big. is that what you were doing when you pushed his nose Yeah. so that's what we'll call it when we're basically pushing the shark away that's like last last minute kind of thing like you don't you don't look to, to go it. do that yeah that, that's but if the do, situation yeah. arises I mean if you do find find yourself in the water with the shark. Right. What's your best advice? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so one really big thing is to make eye contact with them. So I know that people are like, absolutely not. But the eye contact is huge. Just looking at them, showing them. What does that do? Yeah, what is it like? <laughs> right, it shows them that you're paying attention. So, oh. you know, we're showing each other eye contact. Everybody, you know, even on the street, you're kind of okay. sizing and people then up what? all the time. Okay. Face them, show them like your front of your body, and um, kind of remain calm. So a lot of times people think running away is going to be the best thing to do. Right. But that splashing and running away immediately will trigger kind of like a prey response. Okay, so, so after you've made eye contact and established, then can you swim away? I would let them kind of like do their thing, check you out, and then most of the time sharks are going to be terrified of you and they're going to leave like 99% of the time. So um, in that instance... Not that when they see our glare. Okay. Okay. I'm serious. Yeah. You, I mean, I was feeling a little motherly. We both were of you. So um, what do your parents think about you choosing this as kind of your profession? My, my family is really supportive, like all the people like in my life. They're definitely like, you're kind of crazy, but as long as you... Uh, you you know, you're safe, we trust you, that's kind of like the idea. <laughs> what is the per misperception people yeah. have about sharks and what mistakes do people make around mm -hmm. sharks? So I think the number one thing that people immediately think about sharks is that they're just out to eat us. Mm -hmm. If that was the case, we would not be, you know, there's, we would not be surviving. So there's less than 10 people around the entire globe. So mm -hmm. out of 7.7 .7 billion people, only around 10 will actually die from a shark attack every year. So they're not out to hunt us. They're not out to eat us or kill us. As I said, if that was the mm -hmm. case, every time you go to the beach, there would be someone who's injured. Yeah. Have you ever been scared down there? Has anything yeah. ever happened? No, I mean, they're, you know, they're constantly shifting. They can be really, really dominant animals. So of course there's times where I'm like, okay, that's a lot of energy. I'll remove myself from the water if that's the case or like handle what's going on and then get out if they're ever too, you know, too intense. Always kind of respecting that boundary of they are apex predators. I am a small human at the end of the day, so yeah. there's only so much that you can do. Is it true do. that you're supposed to bonk them in the nose if they're like coming after you? So, that's actually, I wouldn't recommend doing that because a lot of times people, when they think about like hitting, one, if you're punching underwater, it's like slow motion. Yeah. So, not great. And then also, if you hit them in the nose, if you actually hit under, it can cause their mouth to open. It's a reflex that they have. Oh, like gosh. same thing if you hit your knee. Mm -hmm. So oh, it just if you're kicks hitting open. them, you don't want to, you know, you don't want to push the mouth open. Mm -hmm. So if you were ever in that situation, I would say like their gills is better if you had to like hit their gills or even like putting pressure on them. They don't like being touched. So if you're like, I mean, even bear hugging, mm -hmm. something like that. I know bear you're hug. like, just mount it. Cool. You're like, no. <laughs> okay. Bring <laughs> it in, shark. <laughs> <laughs> All right,
Adriana. You do you. We'll yeah. stay here on dry land. Yeah, it's good to see you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much. guys. Coming up, an incredible viral video that lets you imagine being this close to the inside of a shark's mouth. We'll be right back. We're back here on The Boost with more shark tales. Each member of this next group has survived an attack, and they are now spreading awareness on how to keep yourself safe in the waters this summer. What would you do if you came face to face with a shark? Well, we actually have a few people right here on our couch who could answer that question. Each and every one of them survived a recent shark attack. Lindsey Bruns is with us, Zach Gallo, John Mullins, Sean Donnelly, and Max Haynes. Guys, welcome. Uh, Lindsey, let's start with you. Everyone was bitten by a shark. You, I think, had the worst injuries of all. Uh, tell us what happened. Well, we were on the water. It was a beautiful day on the water, perfect, no wind, and just enjoying the day. And then on the way back, because we were in the Florida Keys, kind of <laughs> at a sandbar that was out in the middle, mm -hmm. we decided to jump off the boat. And we, me and my girls Your were jumping off the yeah. boat. Mm -hmm. And um, this particular time, I guess I landed on the shark, and he just bit, bit me, mm. but then he left, which wow. was great. Wow. And so when I came up, I couldn't feel my legs, and I just looked at my husband and said, help, and he jumped in and rescued me. Your injuries were pretty severe. Did I understand? You have like, you're five feet tall. You have like three feet of stitches. Is that correct? That's correct, yes. Wow. Um, and so we were kind of far from land, about 20, 25 minutes, and so he had to tie a tourniquet. Oh, my with God. The anchor rope. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> and head in. And so once I arrived, the paramedics were there, and um, I took a trauma helicopter. They were able to give me a blood transfusions while I was there. Ugh. And then I had 11, I think, that first surgery. Oh, oh my, my gosh. <laughs> well, let's talk about Zach and John. You guys are next to each other. This is such a strange coincidence, but each of you was bitten by a shark. You're both lifeguards, but you happen to have been out in the ocean playing a victim in the, as you guys were doing drills and when you were playing the victim the shark got you yeah so uh at smith point i work at smith point uh and um we do training exercises every day to mimic rescue scenarios and i was the victim at that you were time splashing around like you're i was just treading water yeah uh, waiting for my rescuer to come get me and I, all of a sudden i'm i feel just like the sharp pressure in my hand um i try to pull my hand and something's attached to it oh. so i rip and basically just start Hammer punching. You punched the, the shark? Yeah, I, I connected with it three times. And then on the third time, it tail whipped me uh, and swam away. And it was that moment. I'm like, we're dealing with a shark here. So, got, you know, get to shore, get to shore. Oh, my gosh. And uh, just swam in as fast as I could. Something similar happened to you, John. You were yeah. doing lifeguard training. You don't know each other. This mm -hmm. is, you're nearby each other. So what happened in your story? All right, so I was about like 100, 100 for the yards off the shore. And I was just treading water for maybe five to 10 minutes. And I was, as, soon as, as soon as my rescuers got there, that's when I got bit. I felt the mouth around my foot. I pulled out. I just started kicking. I don't know if I connected. The adrenaline was rushing, but 
So I didn't feel it anymore, and that's when I swam the shore. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Well, you know what? It seems interesting. Like, you guys were you were on a sandbar, and it happened with you, Max, too. Were you close to a sandbar? Is that what was happening? So I was very close. I was about 15 yards out, like, mm-hmm. right at the break, and I was just sitting there on my surfboard with my friend. Didn't see anything coming, and then just felt like jaws on my foot, mm-hmm. and it just bit down real hard. I thought it broke my foot, but uh, I was able to get away. I guess it let go. Mm. Pretty quickly. I mean, it, 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 I, the shock you must feel. I what about you, Sean? How yeah. did how did it happen to you? Yeah, I was surfing before work. Um, I paddled out like seven in the morning. Uh, I was maybe in the water for 25 minutes. Surfed a couple waves. Um, I was actually going to get a, the next group of waves, so I was paddling prone, going to get the next wave. Uh, as soon as I got a couple strokes off the sandbar I was on, uh, I got hit once on the board. Enough force knocked me into the water. Oh. When I fell into the water, I saw the fin. And I was like, oh, no, this is shark attack. Um, what, what, do I, what do I do now? Yeah, but thankfully, yeah. I had my surfboard, and I was back on my board before I knew it. The shark came up on the right side of the board. I was able to slap it once. And thankfully, there were some waves coming in, and I just turned around and paddled as hard as I could for sure, and it took me right to the beach. I can't imagine the fear that you guys went through when you were in the water, and I can't imagine, quite frankly, wanting to go back in the water ever again after something like like that happened. Lindsay, for you, did you go back in? Have you been back in? Um, well, the rest of the vacation was spent in the hospital, so yeah. I haven't had a chance yeah. yet, but I... I I plan to go back in. And your girls, yeah. too, who mm-hmm. witnessed yes, it? Yes, yeah. they were already back in in a few days. Mm-hmm. So. Was this something you guys were worried about? I mean, shark attacks? Is yeah. that something that had crossed your mind? You joked about it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. When you're playing yeah. victim, you're sitting out there. Well, yeah. you had heard about his yeah. scenario, right? Because yeah. it happened just a few weeks before the exact same thing yeah, happened to you. a couple mm-hmm. days before mine, and we joked about it. Yeah. And- it's funny how it got bit. But I thought I was fine because <clears throat> that got bit at the same beach I was at, and I figured on the it's like odds, lightning like, doesn't yeah. strike twice. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. never so, so yeah. what is the advice? I mean, people are swimming out in the ocean. You guys said you punched at the shark just out of sheer adrenaline. Yeah. But what's the right thing to do? I think uh, the number one thing, if you do decide to go into the ocean, make sure you're going into an area that is protected by lifeguards uh, because, you know, God forbid there is an emergency yeah. situation like a shark attack. You you have trained personnel that can handle that situation. Um, you know, you go to the beach, ask the lifeguards, is any fins today? You know, hopefully not. You know, mm-hmm. we haven't seen any sharks since we've been back on, since I've been back at work. Um, but yeah. I mean, it seems like an obvious question. It, a shark bites you. It hurts. In that moment, are you just in shock? Mm-hmm. Or did, do you really yeah. feel it? Do you even realize I what's happening to you? I didn't really feel it till I was back on shore and I looked at my foot and it was covered in blood and that's oh, when mm-hmm. I knew it was like a shark attack. Yeah. And I didn't you, even know until. And you guys obviously love the ocean, love the water. This year, everyone's talking about that there are more sharks out there than ever before. Is that what you guys have been experiencing and seeing, even like on the job? Yeah, uh, everyone. Yeah. Everyone asks, is there a shark spotting today? Really? Yeah. yeah. There's always, it's always a yes. Wow. <laughs> what about our surf? You, yeah. I mean, obviously, you know this is like a risk. Surfers yeah. always seem to be attractive to sharks. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, I definitely always had a game plan in my head, like, God forbid it ever happens, you know, what what can you do? You know, I think when you're surfing, at least you have a little bit of protection. You have the board, you have flotation. You know, like, my board got hit first, then my leg got bit. Mm. And I didn't feel it until I got up the beach. So, you know, I, I think, you know, just having an idea of your head of, like, what you do, God forbid it happens, I think helps you. Marine biologist Ocean Ramsey has been swimming with sharks for so long, she names the ones she interacts with in Hawaii. Take a look at this incredible moment with her favorite tiger shark, Queen Nikki. It's a shark moment gone viral. (laughs) As she does almost every day, famous shark scientist Ocean Ramsey was preparing to jump in the water when this happened. I rushed in the water too fast. And she totally, she reacted to that. Queen Nikki, a 16-foot tiger shark, reaching the surface with her mouth open, bumping ocean's fins. And I saw her, and she was close enough with enough speed that it looked like she was actually going at um, maybe my fin tips. And there are a bunch of, like, little schooling fish under. So I could see her speed. I knew that I needed to back off in that moment. If all you know about sharks is what you've seen in the movies... (laughs) It's a jarring, scary piece of video. But to Ocean, it's just Queen Nikki. 
I love that tiger shark. I grew up with that tiger shark. I think we were teenagers at the same time together. (laughs) I've known her for over 20 years. Still, Ocean says these animals are not docile and deserve respect. They are wild animals or apex predators, but they're not monsters. And that's what I want to make sure it doesn't come across. Ocean Ramsey has made a name for herself posting incredible videos swimming with sharks. And she takes regular people into the ocean with her every day to educate them about shark behavior, like she did with our own Miguel Almaguer last year. Incredible, just amazing how many sharks in just a short little area, how quickly and curious they are. As for Queen Nikki, Ocean credits their interaction with teaching her the most about shark behavior posting multiple videos of them interacting over the years. It's just like, that's Nikki, that's, you know, Queen Nikki, and she's such a fun and interactive shark. We were actually really excited for that moment, and I was just so excited to see her. After the break, our very own Tom Costello takes the bait and hits the tank himself. Stay with us. Welcome back to The Booze. Tom Costello recently headed into the Georgia Aquarium where he took the plunge to learn more about sharks and even had a close encounter himself. I like that hammerhead. I like that shark. It's so big. There's something about those teeth, those eyes, that fin. Sharks love to eat people. No, they don't like to eat people. Young or old, sharks capture our imagination. Here at the Georgia Aquarium, they've got hammerheads, tiger sharks, sand sharks, silver tip, and silky sharks, 15 in all. I had oatmeal for breakfast. Is that gonna make me more of an appealing target? Absolutely not, they don't (laughs) like fiber, yeah. They don't like fiber? Yeah. Okay, good. (laughs) Dr. Katie Lyons is a shark researcher and my personal underwater guide today. Take some slow, deep breaths. Within minutes of our shark cage going into the water, Katie's enthusiasm was contagious. So the ones with the big, tall dorsal fin, oh, just right there, look to your right. Yep, I see it. Oh my gosh. Being submerged in their world is truly sensory overload. The water is clear but cold as these giants of the deep stay in constant motion, circling. It's just a totally immersive experience. Oh goodness, what is that? That's a big shark. So that is one of our sand tiger sharks. They're a really cool species. Swimming at the top of the food chain, they are essential to the ocean's life cycle. 
All of these sharks play critical roles in the ecosystem and they help keep everything in balance. Usually sharks are interested in fish or seals, not humans, but attacks do happen. In May, a 13-year-old fended off a bull shark. Most occurred in Florida, followed by New York, Hawaii, and California. Still, 2022 brought the fewest shark attacks in 10 years, 41 unprovoked bites in the U.S. So you're more likely to have a coconut fall on you and kill you than a, to be bit by a shark. <laughs> a coconut. A, co a coconut. But there are some things you can do to avoid shark contact. Swim with a buddy close to shore. Don't swim near seals or schools of fish. Don't wear jewelry. And avoid excessive splashing. If a shark gets too close... You can hit it on the nose. You can hit it in the gills or poke it in the eye. And then get away. And then get away, right? You want to get out of the water as soon as you can. Dr. Lyons is researching the microplastic sharks are ingesting and how their populations are affected by climate change. If they're affected, then everything else below them is affected. Since you have been so excited about sharks since you were a little girl, what's it like to see them face to face like this? I mean, it's just incredible. I mean, it's, again, such a different experience being in with them rather than on the other side of an acrylic. Can I just tell you a couple of cool things I learned? First of all, the hammerhead shark. It goes after the stingrays as prey, and it uses that unusual shaped head to hold the stingray down as it then chops down on the stingray. And the tiger shark, and we've had one circling us here for about the last 20 minutes. They eat everything. They will eat, uh, literally, inside they have found toilet seats and oil cans and baseballs. I mean, they are not finicky eaters whatsoever. So really fascinating species. And listen, everybody needs a fish story, you guys. And this is mine. Terry Sanders might be able to beat this, but this is my <laughs> fish story I'll live with for a long time. Back well, to you guys. Well, well we got, uh, we got, yeah. we got so many questions for you, uh, Tom. First of all, you're underwater. We see the bubbles, but we don't see a tank. So how are you getting air? How are you speaking to us? How can yeah. you hear us? This is incredible technology. You see me pushing. I've got some earphones on the side, and I'm trying to make sure that I can hear you well. You're right. I don't have an oxygen tank. My oxygen is coming straight from the top on some tubes, if you will. And then the, the comms are also coming straight down. And we are using Chris as our photographer here. He works for the Georgia Aquarium. He's a veteran undersea uh, photographer, and he is phenomenal. He shot all of our video underwater. Wow, and then the second cool. camera you see is shooting through the plexiglass right. inside the aquarium to get the wide shots of us and mm. the sharks that are circling us. That's okay. cool, John. He's still very circling, cool. too. Yeah. 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 Yeah, it's yeah, very cool. Stay with us. we got another fun story for you coming up right after the break. back on the boost with one final feel-good video sure to make you smile all day long. Take a look.
a six-year-old boy in North Carolina had a moment he will never forget when his foster parents, Megan and Brian, sat him down and they had some news to share. Several years after Harvey came to live with them as a foster child, he found out that this would now be his forever home. Good job. So, there's something special that happened yesterday. Do you know what might have happened yesterday? No. Harvey is officially adopted. I'm adopted. Oh. Oh. I'm adopted that right now. It oh. became official yesterday. I'm the, I'm adopted. Oh. I'm gonna stay here. Oh. Yay! Oh. 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 Beautiful. Oh my God! It's I'm such a reminder it. that beautiful families come in so many different packages. Uh, thank you so much for joining us here today. We hope we provided you with some new fun facts about the ocean's fiercest predator. We hope to see you again next time on Today All Day. Hey there, everyone. I'm Joe Fryer, and for Carson Daly, for this month's episode of Pop Star Plus Rewind, where we count down some of the top pop culture moments at today. New music and podcasts have kept us busy this July, from Shania Twain to Zach Brown and even Jose Andres. Today has gotten an inside look at all that's up and coming in the world of listening. First up, the queen of country pop. Earlier this month, Hoda got the chance to go behind the scenes and on stage with Shania Twain at her concert here in New York, making for a moment to remember. Take a look. It does feel like I'm having the time yeah. of my life. I'm so enjoying it, I'm absorbing it. I'm really looking at the people, really looking at them, observing them. And for almost three decades, music legend Shania Twain has been giving them something to look at. But there's been something different about this Shania of her latest tour, Queen of Me. She says she's never felt freer. You are immersed. I mean, you are in it. You might as well be crowd surfing. I feel like you're like that kind, you're right in it. I, I feel more appreciative now, I mm. think, than, than ever in my career. I'm celebrating, uh, you know, loving my voice and, and the way I sing. It's very satisfying to me to be able to sing out and mm -hmm. express myself through my voice again without any reservation and any mm. fear. Is there one song when you pick up the mic and you go, this one always feels the sweetest? Well, you're still the one is always. You're still the one. You're still the one I want to And I think it means so much more after COVID as well because the whole world has been through very recently mm -hmm. such an intense, uh, struggle mm -hmm. and so coming out on the other side of that we have all that we're making it mm -hmm. you know against the odds mm -hmm. the song champions togetherness this is your actual wardrobe speaking of togetherness okay. I was about to experience a whole lot of it with Shania backstage in her dressing room this is what I call pink yeah. Elvis oh my god I went in thinking that we were going to see what she would be wearing not sure what's happening, but I like it. As it turns out, Shania had other plans. Oh my God, am I wearing an outfit? I'm over here. Okay, what's happening? Yeah, I have underwear on. <laughs> no, no. I have underwear on, seriously. They're trunks. <laughs> They're performance. This is hilarious. They're just pretty okay, totally normal. You know that newfound fearlessness we were just talking about? <laughs> I'm gonna pee my pants. Yeah. Seriously. Oh, my, my, I'm sorry to pee my trunks. Okay, I'm gonna wear it, but can I wear some pants under? I had to find some for myself and fast. Cross your legs and just let this, you know, let this be part of your, your life right now. <laughs> Look at the camera. Okay. Like, look how pretty it is with her hair. She's gorgeous. This has been the best. I was in Shania's hands now. Let's go. And suddenly found myself headed out on stage in front of 20,000 screaming Shania fans. Now, before I do this next song, I want to introduce someone that I've 
loved for many years. We've been good friends for a long, long time, and we text about all kinds of things, staying in touch, but there's nothing like being in person together. Please welcome to the stage my good friend, Hoda! First of all, I want to say thank you, but I'm actually here for another reason, to surprise you with a little something. I had the honor of presenting Shania with a double diamond platinum record for her 1997 breakthrough album, Come On Over. And then she had a surprise for us, the announcement of the reissuing of Come On Over on August 25th. So you guys are the first to know. I'm very excited about it. It's really amazing how music can go this full cycle and live through generations. So, and that's of course all because of you, thanks to you. And what happened next would go on to stun me. Hoda, after all these years of knowing you, mm -hmm. we're finally gonna sing together. Still the one that I love, the only one I dream. stage, I knew that moment, that magic, would stay with me for a lifetime. It was just so incredibly moving and beautiful. It's like, you, there are moments you dream about happening, and friends, and you know everything you're going to spend a moment like that with, and anyway, she's so generous and kind. Like, I don't even know what to say, but I'm touched, and I'm moved, and it's a moment I'll never forget, once I live. In the words of Shania, that does impress me much. Coming up next, two stars had new podcasts drop this month. We're going to revisit their time at Today when we come back. Welcome back to Pop Start Plus Rewind. Whether you've been to one of his restaurants or heard of his philanthropic efforts all around the world, there's not much Jose Andres can't do. His latest venture brings him into the world of podcasting as the host of Longer Tables, where he's inviting celebrity guests to share their connections to food. Jose invited Hoda on his podcast and then dropped by Studio 1A ahead of the episode's release. Take a look. Hello, hello, Huda. So good to have you in my podcast, Longer Tables. Jose, I have to tell you, I'm honored to be sitting across your long table. I'm having a glass of sherry. You left me a glass of your sherry, too. Do you see that? Hey! hey. I'm having sherry, manzanilla, <laughs> iberico ham. And sherry, I think they're the two best things. Ah, uh, I'm going to try one. Mm. Mm. We are together, Longer Tables. A long table makes people like you and I mm. uh, be connecting. So I was checking, obviously, details of your life. You were born in Norman, Oklahoma, but 
You were raised in Morgantown, West Virginia. I love Morgantown. Tell me. It's a beautiful city. Every time a, f a friend from the plaza shows up from Morgantown, we sing the fight song. It's West Virginia. It's West Virginia. The pride of every mountaineer. I mean, we know the whole thing. And I have to do it because it's love. The word on the street is that your mom is an excellent cook and sends baklava randomly to the Today Show. Let me tell you something. I have distinct memories, Jose, of my mom making that baklava so meticulously with the phyllo dough and then the layer of walnuts and the honey and the butter. And that baklava represents everything to me. And I realize her language of love, Jose, has always been food. As a morning host, mm -hmm. how and when your day starts? What's going on in your life? So, Jose, I set my alarm at 3 a.m. And then until 4.15, I go through a thing in the morning where I try to ask myself, what do I need that day? And when I'm done with that, Jose, I meditate for about 20 minutes. I just sit. And when that part is over, I feel like I'm clear and I'm awake. I mean, it's not nightlife for you. No. Jose, first of all, I have two children. One is six and one is four. I adopted them. It was the best moment in my life. But what I realized the best part about having little ones like that is everybody goes night night at the same time. I'm a morning person anyway. I love a sunrise more than I love a sunset. I love the beginnings of things. I feel like it's magical. So I want to ask you a question about raising adult kids because I've got young ones. So how do you parent your kids who are adults now? You learn as you go. I think I have a, a great relationship with my three daughters. Not like we don't have moments of, ah! Yeah, we are far away from a perfect family. But we are a family that love each other. But I'm in this moment that they have a feeling I'm learning more as a grown-up and as a father and as a parent. Well, you're teaching them, obviously, to be of service by being of service yourself. The part of you that is so passionate about causes and helping, that came from somewhere. Where did that come from? Because you've dedicated a big chunk of your life. You could just be cooking in a restaurant and making a ton of money and putting your feet up, but you're not. Yeah, it's many, many reasons why maybe. It's not just one, it's not black and white either. My mom and my dad were nurses. And, and I always saw that as people that they were always there for the people. And the same talent that I used to feed the few, I could use it to feed the many. Jose, thank you. I loved our conversation. It's so good to see you, and I'll see you soon. Until next time. What a great guy. Another icon who's launching a podcast, Isaac Mizrahi. After rising to fame, styling stars like Nicole Kidman, Sarah Jessica Parker, and Deborah Messing, Isaac made his way into millions of homes through his clothing lines with Target and QVC. Now he's taking his talents to a new forum with his podcast, Hello Isaac, gabbing with guests about their paths to success. Isaac stopped by Hoda and Jenna to tease what to expect. See so coming up with a premise for a podcast is some, sometimes tricky because I feel like most of the ideas yeah. are out there and taken, but I love your premise. Oh, right. Well, you know, <laughs> I am not a, I thought we'll just talk to people and yeah. it would be really fun. But then the people producing were like, oh, yeah, we need something. So I thought about the thought of failure. I thought, like, why don't we talk yeah. about my favorite subject, <laughs> failure. No, seriously, because I do think that there is a lot to learn from failure. And I feel like everyone goes through it and they, there's a stigma around it. And I feel like we have to encourage it. And I'm not the only person to think this thought, but I think I am one of the few people to have yeah. a podcast about, you know, to talk to people about. Because you think a lot of the people you interview are infallible, like they've done right. no, no, and nothing's ever gone wrong. Right. They've always made it. And that's what they want to talk about. So, like, if you say you want to talk about failure, a lot of times you have to kind of Trojan horse it into yeah, the conversation. Yeah, yeah. Like, hey, was there a time in your life where you did not succeed? Yeah. Let's put it that mm -hmm. way. And it taught you something and it brought you somewhere. Yeah. And everybody just goes on. They love yeah. to, you know what I mean? They really love to kind of expound upon it. Because I think lessons, you know, lessons are a big part mm -hmm. of 
Yeah. Success. So you asked two questions to every guest, and your guests are incredible, by the way. Yeah. Andy I Cohen. Know. Right. Um, okay. Jesse Jesse, is, yes, is we coming can name up. Them. Belinda Carlisle. Belinda Carlisle. Oh. Are these all Gabby friends? Gabby Sidibe, huh? Are yes, these, they're, they're these are friends. all people I know, yes. Uh -huh. And so now you're my friends, and I'm going to get you Good. Good. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. We're in. <laughs> okay, so you asked two questions, so we're going to flip it sure. and ask oh, okay. you these questions. Uh -oh, what the are first one is the biggest failure, right? What has been your biggest failure, and what have you learned from it? Well, I would say that that was when my doors were shut down in my couturier in 1998. Yeah. And it was devastating, and I thought I would never come back from it, but I did. I came back from it, and it really... I kind of gathered my head, and I thought, maybe I should do a different kind of fashion, and maybe I should pursue my first love, which is... Music. Performing. performing. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, Acting, you're a performer. performing. Yeah. Being you know, crazy when, and but gay when they, and fun. <laughs> which you are the best, <laughs> the best. Crazy, gay, and fun. <laughs> so, so when they did shut down your line, yeah. did you have self-doubt? Did you say, maybe I wasn't really meant for this? You think? I don't maybe know. just a little Hoda Some, copy? Come on. <laughs> what do you think? I was devastated. But you, were, but you devastated. knew you were good because you had yeah. a line. So That's why right. they and shut it down? And a perfume. Yeah. Yeah. And you were very fancy. For a very long time. And it, but it does, it does set you back. I mean, yeah. what if someone said, okay, we're shutting the show down. Yeah. What would you do? You're going to go crazy, but wow. you would learn some stuff, right? <laughs> I would. Did you ever have a failure that you learned a from? A ton. Seriously? Yeah, I could, yeah. I couldn't Jenna? get hired. I mean, I was on the cover of People Magazine for drinking <gasps> underage. Boom! You know what I mean? Well, that's but so I punk will... rock. Why didn't that happen to me? I think I'm going to go on a drinking spree after this. That's so what I'm You have for. to have a dad that's president. <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, it doesn't right. really Otherwise work. Don't care. That Otherwise, it don't care. All right, so the second question, which is an important <laughs> one is what's your second question you ask every guest about obituaries. oh about obituaries yeah. <laughs> what is your obituary I would think that I because I'm obsessed with obituaries that's the first thing do I you do read them oh in the paper? darling I wake up I go to my front door I get the New York Times the paper you version. get the yes. paper version I do yeah, you know for you. because it's easier to find the obituaries than the paper version <laughs> I'm really, so what do you really do I'm switch? not kidding what are you I do seeking? and I Why go right you, to the, what are you looking first for? of all. You know, I just want to see if any of the people I know have died. <laughs> and have because you I want to make sure to send flowers in a note. <laughs> okay, next. <laughs> and then also, I just find it so fabulous. It's like this, oh, like this great story about a person's well, life, yeah. you know? And I guess what it meant. Now, of course, my obituary would say something like... He was a Renaissance man. Or, I hate the phrase Renaissance. He did a lot a of savant. stuff really did well. What about <laughs> savant? Yeah. Savant. Okay, I like that. And then he was, what would we say before? Crazy, gay, and fun. Yeah, that would, that be, the would be good. Yes, I think so. You know, so. they always say that people have two things. Someone wrote this. There's the resume you and the eulogy you. Right. It's like the resume you is the thing that you're scrapping for every day, but the eulogy you is the thing that matters. What are right. they going to say at the end? Right. Yeah. And the thing that I fear is that, you know, if I die tomorrow, ugh, you know, it's like I need to get a few more things in there yeah. that yeah. they can add in my resume or in my, actually, my eulogy yeah. or my obituary. After the break, we are revisiting Harry Smith's visit to Zach Brown's latest gig, being a summer counselor. Stay with us.
Welcome back to Pop Start Plus Rewind. Odds are you've probably heard of the Zac Brown Band, the group that rose to fame through hits like Whatever It Is and Free. But did you know the lead singer is also a camp counselor? Earlier this month, Harry Smith visited Zach at Camp Southern Ground, which brings children from varying backgrounds together to create a lasting community. Take a look at their conversation. Friday morning at Camp Southern Ground. Y'all ready? A counselor plays his guitar. No, I won't be afraid. No, yes, that is Zach Brown. You have just this minute finished your first full week as a counselor at your own camp. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How are you doing? I'm doing amazing. Y'all give me this pencil. You know, I'm a camp kid. Camp changed my life. It helped me to see so many things. It helped me watch the change that happens okay. in kids when you put all different kinds of people together. For a week at a time, Zach's camp provides a place where inclusion is intentional. Barriers social, psychological, or intellectual are immaterial. All are welcome. Because the ignorance that exists is usually from being sheltered and hate and those things or whatever. is usually something that's learned from someone else that's sheltered. They didn't get to be around different kinds of people. They didn't get to realize the gifts that those people have. And so you tear down those walls and the ignorance is gone. You know, some of the kids that come here have never been invited to a birthday party before. Mm. And they get to be surrounded by that the entire time that they're here, you know, and... That love. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's powerful. It's yeah. powerful, and so you plant that seed in them, and so when they go out back into their world, they see diversity differently. They see it with an open heart and with love. Camp Southern Ground has the ropes course, archery tag, and art center. There is also a massive garden where campers literally pick what they eat. If you can teach someone how to love something, they're going to want to go do it. Come fall through spring, the camp is busy with programs for veterans and military families. As his dream for all of this came true, Zach realized something. It's such a God thing. We just happen to be adjacent to an organic farm. <laughs> like, here you go. Yeah, you're not driving this bus. No, I'm not. I'm following orders. <laughs> I'm following orders, and that's why it's great, because it's, it's not about me. Back in the woods, there's a treehouse that looks like a horseshoe crab. It seemed like a good place to talk about why Brown has devoted so much time and energy to Southern Ground. When you level the playing field to just being human beings, it gives them a personal connection that they have that hits directly home with them for everyone that they see that's different from them from that point on. Those camp kids, after being immersed in that diversity, they're defenders of those people from that point on. Paying it forward is what Brown learned from a camp director years ago. Camp is one of those places where people come with a real true intention that is selfless, that is how to give and share love and understanding and tools with people. And I think our world needs more of that. How was camp for you this week? It was um, quite an experience. I met a lot of different types of people. Amy Sholand was there to pick up her daughter, Emma Rose. Emma, a fourth year camper. She feels normal. She doesn't feel like she's different than everybody else. I bring her here, she likes a sense of independence that she gets to pick and choose and do things without her parents and mm. be in charge of herself. Zach has a song he sings at camp. We're all in this world together. Happiness now, that is the truth. Happiness now, that is the message. And love is the remedy. Love is the remedy. Open up your heart and listen. Love is the remedy. Thank you. As you are sharing that moment, what's going on inside of you? Seeing that magic happen, I've been seeing it happen all week long. Saying goodbye to them is hard because I'm connected to them now. Love you guys. It's always inspiring to see artists give back to communities across the country. When we're back, we're taking a look back at Dan and Shay's recent visit to Studio 1A.
Thanks for sticking with us. Every summer today puts on quite the show with our city summer concert series. Dan and Shay have been a mainstay in the lineup throughout the years. This month they stopped by for another amazing performance. They caught up with the third hour crew on all that's happening in their world. Good to see you guys. Great so to, see, good you guys, to see you guys, man. So uh, earlier you guys performed Bigger Houses and, and uh, Save Me the Trouble for the first time in front of an audience. What was that like? I was kind of nervous, honestly. When we went out there to sound check, I had to tell the fans, I was like, okay, guys, you need to sing these songs back to us very loudly. And they did. They did. They were yeah. rocking. They've only been out for, what, like four or five days now. So they were singing them back, and uh, our fans always have our backs. Does that amaze you that in, in four or five days they know the lyrics Everywhere. to all these songs? Our fans have always been amazing like that. I've always been blown away every time. I'm already, like, surprised. I shouldn't be surprised at this point that they learn them so quickly. I remember there was a time that we put out, I was actually speechless. Uh, whenever Speechless had come out, it had been literally out for, I think, the night. And yeah. we played a show the next day, and there was just everybody knew every single lyric. That's we were just amazing. like that's a big part of why we why we picked that as a single because that's the reaction. Cool. And they do that on every song. Somebody though. on our team's paying them to learn the lyrics. <laughs> <laughs> just a dollar <laughs> passing yeah. around. Yes. Make the guys feel good. Yeah. <laughs> you guys have performed in like every conceivable Today Show space. I, I, next time it'll be backstage, <laughs> behind the scenes, perfect, inside, outside. But I was trying to remember the last time you guys did outside was around the time of your arena tour in 2021, and it was a huge success. But you guys have not been shy about talking about how it took a toll on the two of you. I, I wondered what you guys learned from that experience. Yeah, it was that was a tough couple years for us. You know, we had been a band for almost 10 years at that point, and, you know, you throw COVID in there, which is a crazy couple of years, and being in a duo is very difficult. It's like a marriage. Mm -hmm. If you don't go out of your way to work on it and nurture that relationship, things can fall apart. Mm -hmm. And just oh, like... that's how you do it? Oh, good. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's a little bit of guys. Yeah, here we okay, go. Okay, thank you. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's something that we realized that we needed to spend more time focusing on. And, you know, after 10 years, we were like, we've got an amazing fan base. We owe it to them to get ourselves right personally, get ourselves our relationship right. We sat down one night, hashed everything out, and we, we made a goal, you know, moving forward. We want to spend a few days at least with each other. If we're not on the road, get back in the room, write songs. Let's hang out like we did 10 years ago mm -hmm. when we met, because that's where the magic was. And if you don't go out of your way to do that, things can go by the wayside, and we did. And it was one of the most incredible few months of my entire life. You know, we wrote, accidentally wrote, I think our best album of our career wow. because of that. And our relationship is stronger than it's ever been. And huh. I think when the fans hear this album, I think they're gonna, whether they're listening for it or not, gonna be able to hear that. Yeah, how much influence did that whole period of, of your friendship play into this album? I think, I mean, everything that you go through kind of bleeds into the music when it's genuine. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that there's traces of that all through this album. And uh, the biggest thing that I feel like we have on this, this entire project is it's continuity. It's all, it's all very connected uh, to one another and you can feel it through the music. And I think you can feel kind of where we got to in our relationship mm -hmm. through the music. And there's just something that's intangible that you can't quite describe, but right. we've been doing this for a long time and we know when something is genuine and when it's not. Mm -hmm. And, and our fans know that and people know that. And I think there's been such a big reaction to songs like Save Me the Trouble and Heartbreak on the Map and Bigger Houses especially uh, because they know it's genuine and, and whenever we, yeah. we sing it, you know, they can, they can feel that we believe that we're, you know, when we're, we believe what we're singing. Mm -hmm. And that's an important Makes thing uh, whenever you, yeah, it's, it's kind of crazy how much that really plays a part mm -hmm. in it. So very, very exciting stuff to be a part of all of this. Yeah. It's just incredible. Your youngest is, I think, six months old now. Yeah. Uh, I, I travel all the time. Jacob travels all the time. H how do you guys deal with that and also kind of, you know, look after the family. It's kind of crazy, you know, you definitely have to, I mean, this was kind of a part of Dan and I's journey of making mm -hmm. sure that you know, that's been my focus over the last couple of years is living in the now. Mm -hmm. You know, I feel like I've spent my whole life looking forward or, you know, to something to come or, you know, looking back on something and being like, man, that was, those were the glory days, you know, and I feel like you really have to live in the moment and be present. And mm -hmm. every time that, uh, even if it's a little bit of time that I get to spend with my, t my family, we make sure that it is real time and I put down my phone and, you know, I think we all can work on that. It's not <laughs> something that we ever get right 100% of the time. And I think that uh, it's just all about your focus and making sure that we're living in the now because this is all we're going to have is this okay. moment right here. And, uh, and we can't look back and can't look too far ahead. We have to appreciate the moments that we get like this one. With, with well, you and yeah. we always love when you're here and yeah. we love the idea that you guys are going to be the first duo coaching pair ever on The Voice. We're so <laughs> pumped. It's crazy. Wait, I'm so this you is, guys explain. Well, look at this. This is the first picture. Oh, this, this is an actual that picture. Real? That's real? That's it. Yeah. That's a real we one. haven't seen a picture of that yet. <laughs> Two, <laughs> adjoining, I'm saving it for wow. this moment. Two adjoining chairs with one buzzer? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Who presses the buzzer? That's built in comedy. It's perfect. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see. This Tune into the voice. This is going to start a new fight. Right. Exactly. This is going to be the demise of Dan and Shay right here. <laughs>
Such good guys. Well, that wraps it up for today's episode of Pop Start Plus Rewind. Thanks so much for hanging with me and have a great weekend. Nothing better on a dreary winter day than some warm comfort food, right? Well, we got mm -hmm. a great one for you today, folks. Jocelyn Delk Adams, mm -hmm. she's back with us. She's the author of Everyday Grand. Jocelyn, welcome back. Good morning. I know. Hey, it's been so long, guys. Oh, it's it's good been to see so you. long. Thank you. What are we making? Meal you're making? Lemony chicken mm, rice casserole. With chicken thighs. Oh, yes. With chicken thighs, because you know it makes a difference. Yes, it does. It does. Right? Makes them nice and juicy. So we're going to start by dredging our chicken thighs. We've got some flour here. I'm going to add in some parsley. Parmesan. Mm, yeah, I've got wow. onion and garlic. Powder. You're like, oh, and then of course some lemon zest. You know okay. how to, you know how to zest it. Okay, let me see. Now. Let me see this. Let me see these skills. Hey, right this is a woodworker here. right here. Yeah. 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 How much do you? How much do you want? All right, just, oh, you like how much? You're like, I'll be over here all on. day, right? Okay, Come that's on. pretty good. That's pretty sure. good. All right, I'll give you more. I'll give you more. All right, all right, all right. I'm putting you to work here. We're gonna whisk that up, and then we're gonna dredge these. Okay, we're just gonna add this right in. And why is it so important to dredge? Well, we want to get that nice. Coating. It's gonna okay. give us like that nice crisp coating. Mm. I'm gonna get it in that flour. Does that help thicken up the sauce? Well, it's pour also it gonna thicken it? up the sauce too, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And could then you we're use gonna an almond flour if you want. Of course okay. you could. Oh, come on. You know, <laughs> you know. And we're gonna put this right into our oil. You can definitely play around. You can even mm. use, you know, any type of gluten-free flour okay. if and that's like. You like, like to a, start skin side down? Yeah, I do too. I do. I like to, crisp to get that nice crisp. crisp. It up. Yeah, we're gonna get that crispy. And then we're gonna work on our casserole dish. Do you have to cook it through in the pan? Well, you don't because okay. we're also going to throw it in the oven Perfect. too. So okay. we just want to get it browned and mm -hmm. then we can get it in the oven. Okay. So we've got some cream of chicken. You want to whisk okay, this sure. up for me? Okay. And then I've got cream some of chicken stock. There you go. Yeah. Because oh, yeah. you know nothing's more comforting than yeah. some yeah. Cream yeah. I use chicken cream of chicken yeah. soup, right? So. And would you add just there? Yep. And then I've got our rice that we're oh. going to go right okay. in here. And then awesome. I've got some garlic too. I'm going to pop that okay. in. Well. Yeah, because we love garlic. And then down here, of course, you can see that our our um, our chicken thighs are mm, ready. Right. And then this is oh when gosh. we're just going to add this right into our dish. Oh, oh, Goes right in. Oh yeah. Oh my goodness. You already this tasted is, it, oh, Craig you? started it. This you is already worth making. did it. I know you did. This is That's, worth oh making tonight. Yeah, look, you're going to do it, aren't you? Oh, my goodness. Chicken up, goes so in. So you just put it in there. Yep. So it's just a one dish. Pop this oh, in. That is. Pop this in. And then how long in. are you going to put that in the oven for? We're going to put this in the oven for about 40 to 50 minutes. And then oh my, usually oh we gosh. cover it mm -hmm. with foil because we want to make sure all that rice gets really tender. Oh, oh, Y'all over there are killing my dish, right? Y'all wow. know how oh, I do. Wow. All right. Oh, wow. And then the lemon goes on top because oh it's so beautiful. So you cook it with the lemon there. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. to get a little oh, bit more of that How long do you bake it? She told you you about your eating. I'm eating. She already said she was like, whoa, 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 whoa. What's going on? I can't remember. Oh my God. So yeah, this goes in. You put the foil over the top, mm -hmm. bake it for about 40 to 50, then take it off if you want to brown it oh a little gosh. more for about 10 minutes, and then you're ready to serve. Oh, oh you got an delicious. air fryer salmon. I sure do. Four Wait, this ingredients. Is an air fryer? Yes, four ingredients. Because no. we were talking about the air fryer, how it's like the perfect okay. appliance. If you want to add another appliance? Yeah. I've never made salmon you know, in the air fryer. So easy. How easy is it? So easy. What are these like, so easy? And it's done really quickly, oh, too. Great. Four ingredients. Okay, what is that? So I've got some oh soy God. sauce mm -hmm. in there. I got some honey. Ooh. Okay. Okay. Ooh. Let me see. What else do I have in there? I can't got even some remember. Sesame seeds. Yeah. Oh, that's a garnish. Mm -hmm. And then you just drop it in the air fryer mm. for about like ten minutes. But sometimes mm. it depends on your air fryer. Sometimes it cooks really quickly. Mm. But I love the air fryer because it gets that nice crisp skin mm. at the top. Oh this my is God. delicious. Come on. Oh, well done. All right. I like to it's make salmon great. skin bacon. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Well, well, I like that. What do you do? You just just put it on. Just take amazing. some of the skin off the. In fact, I go to the. I go to my fishmonger, and yeah. you know, he gives me extra. He goes, a lot of people don't it's like so to use his fish I love this skin. Right? It's so good. He goes to his fishmonger. Yes. Yeah. I want two that for two on this. You guys love them. We are going to make a mashup that you didn't realize you needed. Pizza meatloaf. Mm, here to show us how is Jocelyn Delk Adams, founder of Grand Baby Cakes and author of Everyday Grand. Which you can buy right now, Everyday mm -hmm. Grand. Uh, this is a heck of a concept. Yeah. I know, right? Because my kid loves pizza. It's like, what's for breakfast? Pizza. Yes. Right. Like, what do you want for dessert? Pizza. pizza. Everything. So I was like, I've got to make pizza variations. Right. Of okay. like all so this the is the best of meatloaf with a pizza. Exactly, with that pizza twist. Okay. So I'm going to start with some pepperoni because okay. she loves pepperoni. My daughter right. loves pepperoni. So I'm just going to just dice it up. You can make it as small as as big as you like. Mm -hmm. You like a lot of texture. You can make it bigger. So you want 
lot smaller, blend it in, and then like a meatloaf, we just start adding that stuff together, add the pepperoni right? to the ground beef. Yep. Wow. Or ground and it's going to give that, yeah, ground it's turkey. Meat on ground, meat. Meat on meat. It's a meat It's a meat. Meat. It's a <laughs> That's, yes. <laughs> meat lovers will love this, right? Okay. So pepperoni in there. I've got some garlic okay. going in there. Mm -hmm. Got some parsley. And then you can throw those eggs in for, for me. The binder? Yep, get it in there. Okay. Gotta bind it up. And then we've got some Italian breadcrumbs okay. here. Yeah. Gotta get that in there. And then we've got some seasonings. We've got some oregano. We've got um, some seasoning salt. We've got some black it's like pepper. like the pizza part of yeah, it. Yeah, the pizza part. And okay. then we've got some milk as well. Okay. Just, Just whole milk. Whole, whole thing. You can use whatever milk you okay. want. Okay. If you want to use like a coconut milk, if you want to use something like, like can you soda over milk. stir this too much? Well, I like to just make sure Cut everything's that. combined mm -hmm. as much as possible. Also, you can play around with the toppings, like yeah. if you like olives, if you want to throw oh. mushrooms in mm -hmm. here, okay. like you can do that too. And then we get that all stirred up, and then we get it into our loaf pan. Okay. This is the fun part: is I like to create a well right oh. in the center. And throw cheese. Oh, well, man. now we're talking. Is this mozzarella? Yes. Oh, my gosh. Oh, yes. I mean, it's a pizza meatloaf. Okay. We're good. Now cheese, the right? sauce. Yes, now the sauce. So, to make this easy, like people can buy like a pizza sauce mm -hmm. like at the grocery store. Right. And then I like to doctor it up, just add some additional sure. seasonings okay. in there. Got some garlic powder, okay. got some oregano, some basil, mm -hmm. and got some parsley. And then for a little kick, I've got some red pepper. Red pepper. Ah, there you go. Is that yep. basil? Yep. Okay. All right. Just get okay. that in there, and then you're going to stir it up. Now, if you don't have time, just grab Buy the, the sauce. Right, right. Keep it moving. All right. This can still be a really easy thing. You're going to bake it. All that now, cheese cover, is going to ooze uh, in the center. Where do you cover, do you cover this up just so, with the sauce? So, yeah, if you have some ex uh, extra meat, you can just start ah. flipping it over the top. Mm -hmm. We're going to not do it with oh, the Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. And then it covers the well, and right. then you bake it up, Look and then this. the cheese, like, just melts in the center when it oh, comes out goodness. of the oven. Oh, just the presentation. Alone. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. It's so fun. And yes. then you just drizzle the sauce on it. And then you just drizzle the sauce, and, on it? Drizzle the sauce and, and serve it with I'll it. Try it. Come on, get into wow. it now. Here we go. That's great. Isn't it so mm. young? What a great concept. Mm. Yes. And this is good for like football too. Like oh, sure. Is, right? Mm. That's really good. You can make little individual ones. Yes, you can make little individual oh, ones. Fantastic. Serve them up. It's so easy. And that's fun. really good, Josh. Thank you, Josh. <laughs> Cold temperatures call for a much needed comfort food in the home. So we brought in Jocelyn Delk Adams, author of Everyday Grand, to share a delicious, cozy winter meal. Happy New Year, Jocelyn. Great Thank to have you, you here. Happy got the New Oscar Year. nominations are happening right this now. This is like my Christmas day. Yeah, I have going no on. idea how much I enjoy Oscar nominations. We make We're going to have them for house. us in a few minutes. Delicious. Well, let's Thank get you. to that delicious meal. What, what are you making for us? <laughs> All right, so we are going to do some rotisserie chicken stuffed shells. Love and it. we start with just a rough chop of our garlic. We want to just cut off that stem and then just go down this like really quickly. So when you said rotisserie, I'm thinking, do I have to make a chicken or can you just buy a rotisserie chicken? The yes, market, you or? can just buy a rotisserie chicken. It makes it so much okay. easier instead of just making it your own. 
cut all the time. So you got so we're your gonna garlic. start working on the sauce. Yeah, so we're gonna do a rough chop of that and then okay. we're gonna get to the sauce. So we're gonna add in some heavy cream. Oh, nice, that nice sizzle. Ooh. Then we're gonna add in some parm because okay. we wanna make this thick and creamy, right? We've got some Creole seasoning. That's ooh, where you're ooh, getting that ooh. kick. Ooh. Creole seasoning ooh, and some Italian seasoning. So it's kind of like a blend, it's a mashup, right? Beautiful. And we're gonna whisk that together and we're gonna actually bring that to a simmer so we can get that to get nice okay. and thick. We'll work on that. Then we're gonna work on this rotisserie chicken. You can easily shred this with like two forks. You can use your hands. Or I have a nice trick. I like to use a hand mixer. Oh wow. Yes. Get a big bowl, throw that chicken in, and use the hand mixer. And, and it then meat just minutes. falls off the bone? Falls off, shreds wow. it perfectly, wow. does it in a couple minutes. It's so crazy oh easy. God. Yes, I have like a oh quick God. TikTok on it, too. I'm interested. So you have your yeah. sauce, you have your, your chicken's been pulled off the pulled bone. Pulled off the bone, you've got this. And now this. everything sits for a second while yes. you make the piping. Yes, so we got to make the sits. filling. So we're going to add our chicken into some mm -hmm. ricotta. We've got mm -hmm. some broccoli, so we can get some veggies yeah. in here. Mm -hmm. I also like to sub in some, you know, spinach. Spinach, if you want to add that into, mm -hmm. we've got some onions, we've got some more parm because you know, hey, we got to add that into. This is already giving meal. me like broccoli cheese vibes, yeah. which is a comfort food when it's, it's cold out. World, yes, yeah. and then I add in a little bit more creole. We're gonna mix that Why all not? together, and Why you're gonna not? get that nice and smooth. Yes, and then here are. we've got our fillings. So. How, do, how do me, Craig, and Al do this? this okay, come <laughs> on, come on, it's like intimidation pipe factor. Cupcakes, yes. come on. When you got kids, Piping. you gotta pipe some cupcakes. Tell them about the Ziploc trick. Yes. Oh, yes. So, okay, yeah. most people don't have like a piping bag no. at home. Right. You can get one of these bags, the resealable bags. You just snip off the end oh, okay. once you've added well, now, in everything, see, and then it just comes right mm -hmm. out. Really that awesome. awesome. We can do that. We can handle got that. that at home, right? Uh -huh. So you want you want to you want to try? You yeah, can say yes, that. Let's yeah. Do it. Okay, you're just gonna fill this. You've already like um, you know cooked your spinach or your pasta, and you're just gonna pipe this right inside. You want to try it? Yep, I sure do. Okay, go for it. All I'm right. telling you, so easy. Or if you get really intimate. Craig, you can okay. use a spoon. Okay, with that. All right, you can play it easy. <laughs> and then what, Jocelyn? How long you yeah. put? You so cook once these we off, have or? those, yeah. So once we have those filled, we're gonna put that right on top of can our. Ask a dumb question: Are those, <laughs> is those pasta shells? Are they already pre-cooked? Yeah. So we okay. cooked them already. Right, okay. They're ready to go. Okay. We've let them kind of come to room question. temperature, okay. and then we're adding them right on top of the sauce that we prepped earlier. Yeah. So we're gonna pop these in. We're gonna add some cheese right on top and bake them for about 20 minutes till it's nice and bubbly and delicious. Wow. You know what? It's also good for kids because mm. it's delicious, but you hit a little broccoli I in there. Yeah. I don't like that. I just throw as much green in there as possible. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, it's fun. Colors, it also has like. Know. Could you it, make this ahead of time? Yes, you can totally prep this ahead of time. Put this in the refrigerator and then bake it off. It has like a little bit of a guilt-free thing to it too. It doesn't feel too bad like mm. you're eating yeah, a giant but it's lasagna nice and cozy with 18 too, layers. right? Oh, it's exactly. And then you've got the chicken, so it's a little Just lighter. Thank you, Thank you so much. Thank More you. recipes in the next hour, by the way. Joining us this morning. Jocelyn Delk Adams, founder of Grand Baby Cakes, also the author of Everyday Grand, which, oh, by the way, is available for pre-order as we speak. Sure is. And <laughs> jo Jocelyn is here to share her spin on a classic and easy weeknight dish Welcome back. And you're going to help me. I am going I am going to help this morning. <laughs> so tortilla chip casserole could not be easier. Tortilla you can get the kids involved. Casserole. You can even do this, okay? Because I know you can be, <laughs> I know you can be cooking challenged. So we're going to get True. this together. So to start, I'm going to show you how we're going to dice up these like bell pepper, okay. right? You're going to get these strips, just kind of get them together really easily. And then just go down to create like these small little dices, okay. right? Really easy. Just gather all that. And that's all you Even gotta do. I can do that, Josh. Yeah, you can do that. You can do that. Yeah. See, you're okay. winning already. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna start on our meat mixture. I've got some ground beef here. Gonna add this to some olive oil. You hear that nice sizzle? And I assume you could easily swap that out with turkey or yeah, you can even turkey, ground chicken. Even ground chicken. Okay. Yep, whatever you got is fine. And then I'm gonna add in our bell pepper here. Mm -hmm. And then can you add in that diced onion yes, and some garlic yes, for me? So that's it. That's pretty that's simple it. so far. So yeah, you got to start cooking this down. You're gonna brown it. How much garlic is that? Uh, I mean, hey, is I it? love garlic. Okay. All right, add it in. All right, oh, yes, ma'am. Add as much as you want in there. And then this is when we get into the flavors. Like we're gonna add in two salsas. So if you have Taco have Tuesday tonight, of course you yes. might have some leftover salsas. Mm -hmm. Add in the red and the green. That's gonna give us ample flavor how about here. The chunky one, Josh? Yeah, you can grab the chunky yeah, yeah, for that chunky. texture. Yeah. You take so your salsa seriously. 
out there. Yeah, I do. <laughs> you can't play around with salsa, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. We're going to add in this salsa, and then we're going to oh, add in some really taco good. seasoning. So just store-bought taco store seasoning? Store-bought, wow. get it in the little Easy. packet, and just toss it all together mm -hmm. with some chicken stock. Chicken stock. What's oh, the word, Al? It's very good. Mm -hmm. It's really good. Oh, yummy, Crunchy right? Really yummy. Oh, my gosh. So you're going to cook this together. This is our swap. Hello, the magic of TV. Okay. Yep, looks really good. You're going to let that kind of thicken up into this, and then we're going to start adding in our additional texture. We've got. Is that cream of mushroom? It is. Oh, I love that. I know. It it's makes it so creamy. For everything. Well, you can throw it into that. everything. We can throw it into soup? everything at my home. Yeah. Everything. Cream of mushroom, mushroom soup. soup. Oh, yeah. Just oh, yeah. throw it into everything. Wow. It makes everything so much better. Why do you like it so much? What does so yeah. it's so creamy. It adds so much richness along with like the sour cream mm. in this. It mm. really Umami. makes that texture so great. Yeah. And I love anything with mushroom too. We're going to add in some black beans okay. too. Grab that, add that in, and of course the sour cream I was talking about. Mm -hmm. Throw that in too for that extra richness and that tang. And this then we're gonna like add in some Mexican cheese. cheese blend. Yep, get that in there. All right. And we're gonna stir that together. Oh, cool. Oh, and then this is when you get the kids involved, or mm -hmm. you can get rid of like your morning aggression. I'm gonna have to like, <laughs> you know, just go for oh, it. And yeah, just, you know, you know. Ugh, get that get out. The kids. This is get the kids. I know. He's like, I'm taking that over. Yeah. Right. You're gonna crunch oh, so that this together. Is cool. This goes in the pan. Goes in. And you then can, you build it. Yeah. And then you just start building it. And this is where we get into our casserole. It's almost like a lasagna. You're going to just layer it up. Oh. Mm. The oh, bottom that's... layer is Doritos or whatever yeah. your corn chip is? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. You can, can use do the Frito. cheesy ones. Mm. Fritos. Mm. Fritos. Mm. Like Frito. whatever Flaming your hot. faves are. Yeah. The flaming Hot. Mm. You know, get oh, some like spice that. in there. Like whatever you love. Like you can really adapt this and make this into whatever it's you really like. Good. It's almost yeah. like a layered dip. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It is. Like and then like you bake it off and you get all those textures. You get the crunch. Oh, it's so yummy. Creaminess. How long do you bake it? About 30 minutes. Okay. And then you're going to add some cheese on top. Don't add the cheese at the beginning and put the foil over it because it'll, it'll stick, stick to, to the, the foil. foil. Okay. Yeah. Oh. So do it. My take the foil off this. and then great. just add the cheese and then let it get all lovely. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then it comes it's out. So I'm going to taste it. Tell us oh about this new cookbook. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh my gosh. It's called Everyday Grand yeah. and it's all about just mm -hmm. loving and enjoying every single moment of life. So like great. I wanted to just make a book that just made everyone happy mm -hmm. right finding so much joy and just beyond just holidays like you got a good hair yeah. day celebrate, celebrate. Yeah. Got the book is hey, terrific Ooh, thank you al endorsed it i was so grateful to awesome. him i mean like hey you changed the tire celebrate that's good your four-year-old's gonna love this <laughs> yeah she loves it thank it's you, so good thank, thank, you. Thank, you. Jocelyn. Jocelyn, thank you again
It is Make Ahead Monday, desserts on the menu, with two great recipes that'll earn you brownie points. We've got Jocelyn Delk Adams from Grand Baby Case. Good morning, Jocelyn. Good morning. How are you today? We're well, great. going to be all the better for this <laughs> perfect brownie recipe. Let's get started yes. on the batter. Yes, so I've got some melted butter in my mixer here, and I'm going to add in two sugars. This is why these are so perfect, because they have that great chewy consistency. Mm -hmm. So I love to use both granulated sugar and brown sugar. Mm. Yum. Dark brown going. or light yeah. brown sugar? You know what? If you really want to go chewy, you go dark brown. If you want like a nice sort of kind of in-between balance, then go with the lighter. Mm. Okay. I didn't know yeah, was so I want to get that mixed really, really well. And then I'm going to start adding in my eggs. I've got two eggs and they're room temperature. That's very important. And I'm going to add them in one at a time into our batter. Hmm. Jocelyn, as you're making these, I'm, I made these yeah. when you were supposed to be on a couple weeks ago, but had a power yeah. outage or something. And, and I made them because they sounded so good. And I'm noticing there's a couple things that I didn't quite do right. And I loved them the first time, so I can't wait to do it again. And you say, like, know, whisking I mean, the eggs is it's important. It's like a foolproof recipe, pretty much. Like, yes, the whisking of the eggs. I find that people love that crackly top on a brownie. Mm -hmm. And the whisking of the eggs is so key to that. If you whisk them really, really, really well, well, like take some time with that, you'll get that perfect, gorgeous, crackly top. And then you put in the flour, right? I didn't even realize you can mm -hmm. overmix flour, but I guess you can. Yes, you can, because as soon as you start to get that flour in, that's when you're going to activate your gluten, right? And we don't want tough brownies. We want to make sure that we just get it in just enough to where it's kind of in the batter and it's smooth mm. enough and then stop. You're like, not worried pull about away clumps? and you're done. Yeah, you don't want to worry too much about crumbs. You want it to be nice and smooth, but I find that people sort of just overdo it. They're like, I got to get it like perfect, mm -hmm. perfect, perfect, perfect. And it's like, you don't need to worry about that. It's and, perfectly and, fine to just do it that way. And Jocelyn, really quickly, put them in the pan to make sure they come out clean. What do you do with the pan? Ah, yes. So, lovely tip here. I love to add my parchment right into the pan. And here is my swap out of my batter. And this actually helps. So, like, when you're done with the baking, you can oh, pull yeah. this right Ooh. out of your pan Perfect. without having to, like, go through all the crazy messiness. That's yummy. And then we're making yeah, ice cream. So Are we making ice cream? Yeah, sandwiches? after you make the perfect brownie, yes, you're making it even are. better. <laughs> yeah, so, like, if, if you have any leftovers, and that's something that I find, like, I usually don't. Like, people eat my brownies, say, and then they're gone in, like, two seconds. Brownies. And I'm like, hey, right, exactly. Like, if you actually have leftover brownies, then this is, like, a fun thing to do. I've got two types of ice cream here. And I just grab some of my, like, two pieces of brownie, or mm -hmm. you can split them in half if right. you like a thinner consistency. And I just grab an ice cream scoop. Mm. Uh, Add right to the center oh, of this baby. Wow. That looks good. Jocelyn, you are living right. I know. You look so beautiful this morning. Can I as, just tell you with that yellow? Beautiful. Thank you. Seriously. Hey, Jocelyn, it must really be quickly. On the brownie sandwiches. Could you, could you make twice the batter uh, and freeze the brownies after they're baked? Well, what I do is I take the leftovers and I just, whenever I have them, I take two pieces of brownie or I split a brownie in half mm. and then I just add the ice cream right to the center. All right. There you go. Jocelyn, thanks They're so delicious much. delicious Always brownies. great to see you. Thank you so much. Okie doke. For these recipes, head to today.com slash food.
Baby Cakes founder and our pal Jocelyn De Delk Adams is here to share the sweet and simple recipe. We don't care if it's winter. We want key lime pie. <laughs> key lime pie. Yes. yes. <laughs> okay. We love key lime pie, and you're saying cook it all year long. Who cares? Bake it. Oh my gosh, we make it for Christmas, we make it for Thanksgiving, like instead of like the traditional pumpkin, you know, we also have this next to the sweet potato pie, okay, because my dad absolutely adores it, so I've got to make it year round. All right, the best part I always think of a key lime pie is the crust. Yes, the crust has got to be on point. Give me a graham so get cracker. Us started. Oh my God, yes, I agree. So I've got some graham cracker crumbs. Mm. You can also just buy some graham crackers and grind them up in your food processor. I've got a little sugar, cause you know, we're getting sweet here. Mm -hmm. And then I've got some melted butter. Mm. And I'm just gonna do a quick whisk and get those all combined. And that's our crust. How easy was that, easy. right? Easy. Yes. So I'm gonna mix that all together, let that kind of become like wet sand, mm -hmm. like that kind of consistency. Mm -hmm. And then I'm gonna pour that right into our pie that. plate, which mm. I've also we like sprayed with a nonstick spray. Simple. Yeah, spray. just okay. get that in there. Okay. Yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. And then I'm just gonna start patting down. You can pat down with your hands. You can also use like a measuring mm. cup and also get that really smooth in there. Uh -huh. This is what I like to yeah, do. That's so easy. it looks a little bit, you know, more professional and too how do you, on the side. Oh, there, you get it up by pushing it up like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you just start pushing it up the sides. Okay, yep. so we've got our crust. Yeah. Yeah. to bake it first, is that true? Yeah, so I like to bake mine for about maybe like 10 minutes just to kind of get like a nice kind of golden color on the outside. Mm -hmm. And it also kind of sets it up a little bit more too. Okay. So we're going to pretend like we baked this one. Okay. And we're going to get to our filling like really quickly. You can you just get this together. Minute. I know. Okay. Hey, speed, <laughs> speed here. We got to play the TV game, so we got to go fast. Okay. So I'm going to get to our filling. I've got some sweetened condensed milk here. Mm, I'm going to add that right that. into, oh, yeah, thick, right? I love Ooh, the hums. Like, oh, thick, mm, thick. That. It's luscious. It's mm. creamy. This is like that secret weapon in your key lime pie that gives it that beautiful, luscious consistency. Okay. And I've got some egg yolks. Mm -hmm. We're yolk. going to skip the, the whites. We're going to just the egg yolks. going to make it super rich and delicious and actually like a nice, moist texture. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to add in just two more ingredients. Of course, our key lime juice. Yes. How much, Grab how this much at the grocery you store. You, you can buy key yeah. lime juice at the grocery yeah. store? Easily, right on the shelves. Or if you want to turn this into like a lemon, you know, baked pie, oh, you can easily use lemon juice too. Yeah. Can I ask a dumb it's question? It's great that way too. Is, is key yeah. lime juice different lime than juice? lime juice? Is it just lime juice? It totally is. No, it is. There are different key limes. They're like the little small limes that you'll see, those specialty limes, versus like those bigger limes that you see in the grocery so store. When so you, the key limes, it would take you a long time to juice all those. You have to way. look for the actual key lime juice. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Key lime juice. Got you want to grab that instead okay. of the lime juice. Okay. That okay. Thank you. The grocery store. Thank you. And then finally, just a little vanilla. Oh, yummy. And I'm just going to whisk all that together until it combines and it takes like a couple seconds. Mm -hmm. oh, and then how do you yeah. make it green? You Is don't it make green? it green. So when oh, you, you see people with people like the green yeah. ones, yeah. they've added That's like food coloring, food coloring oh. to that. Oh. Yeah, that is I not that. like a traditional, like real Did key lime pie. Like, we don't play around with that. I oh. sort of like it just like that, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is how you do it, right? This is the consistency. <laughs> this is the look. This is what you want. And we're going to pour oh, that oh, right oh, into. Oh, oh, look at that. Look at, oh, yeah. look at Beautiful. Look at that. I just like to watch yeah. the pouring. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I wish I could lick that. <laughs> I know it has it eggs in it. It is kind of seductive. It okay, is beautiful. Well, I mean, do? hey, we got Valentine's Day coming up, right? And you bake that, and baby? And then if you... Yeah, you bake this baby. If you have like a deeper pan, just maybe double the filling, yeah. totally mm -hmm. up to you. And then if you want to do this beautiful variation that I have here, this is my raspberry Ooh, pretty. key lime pie. Wow. It's gorgeous, right? And, and you just really add a little pops. whipped cream on top? Yeah, I just add a little whipped cream on top. Here, I just use some melted raspberry jam and I kind of just spoon it over. Mm, make it marble. Just drizzle. Uh -huh. Yeah, and then and it just adds something special to it. Or you can bake as how, is. How long do you bake it, And then it, I just kind of just. Uh, you bake for about 10, 
15 10, minutes 15. max, Easy. Easy. and then it comes out like this. Can we oh. see? There's Beautiful. our, there's our traditional key thank lime you. pie. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> Grand baby cakes rocks. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jocelyn. And yes, for, thank you. Thank you. Mm. And for this recipe, head to today.com slash food. Welcome to The Boost. Today's all about second chances at love, at life, and at just making dreams come true. So we're going to start with a love story more than 60 years in the making. 78-year-old lovebirds reconnected ahead of their 60th high school reunion, and their whirlwind romance is making hearts swoon. Jenna Bush Hager has that sweet story. I want to spend the rest of my life with you to cherish every moment. We will have together to make every day an exciting new adventure and to grow old with you. Marry me. Oh, yes. <laughs> it's a love story for the ages. Just a couple of kids head over heels and a marriage proposal viewed over three million times on TikTok. Well, I just been bouncing around like a 25 year old. Having all the stars line up to help it happen, it sort of gets shoved into the miracle category. Tom and Nancy's story is more than 60 years in the making. The two met at a small high school in Quincy, California back in 1960. She was drop dead gorgeous cheerleader. And so I admired her from a distance. He was just cute and nice and crew cut and jockey and still is cute. We did have a, one or two dates. I went abroad for six months. Uh, and I ended up falling in love and getting married to my first wife, where I was married 30 years. And I didn't run into Nancy again until 10 years ago when I went to my 50th high school reunion. I mean, we were each preoccupied with another relationship. But when their 60th reunion rolled around this year, the stars aligned. When I sent my note in, when I booked my flights, uh, Nancy responded with, well, maybe we could get together. And then we called, we talked for hours, hours, every day. From June 10th until now, we fell in love again. It was a whirlwind few weeks. I did want something like this to happen. And I think part of why it happened was because I asked for it to happen. I asked the universe. And then an invitation to visit Tom in Florida turned into a fairy tale at the terminal. I couldn't wait. I, I surprised her. And she arrived at the airport and she didn't know what was happening. I dropped down on the two knees and I read my proposal. We we're both crying. I love you more than words can express and more than you can ever comprehend. I want to spend the rest of my life proving that to you making you the happiest woman in the world. And then, then I said, will you marry me? And she said, yes. Marry me. Oh, yes. <laughs> My reaction to being proposed to was shock. Expecting to find this kind of love anytime is kind of hard to imagine, but especially in this last few chapters that we have. You were both almost octogenarians and we're finding love true love and you can't give up hope oh <laughs> First of all, to witness this love story, to be part of it, is really special. To re-watch yeah. that, oh, Nancy. Every time I see it, it's so beautiful to see again. And it went viral. Well, no kidding, and I get why. It just takes one look at that, and you know everybody's sharing it. You know what I love about, there's so many things to love about this story, but to me, it's like believing in love, no matter when, no matter where. I mean, did you think that, you would be able to fall in love. A lot of people go through a relationship and say, you know, never again, that was that. What made you think that there was more to this story? I, all the prior relationships and marriages have taught me lessons. And I, for four years, was searching for something. Mm -hmm. And happiness is to love and to be loved. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's what I hope for. Wow. 
Oh my gosh, Nancy! I, Nancy, three million views. <laughs> did y'all on TikTok? Yes. Are y'all on? Like, or but did you even know what TikTok and all of that no, was? No, <laughs> no. I mean, I'm in this little tiny town, and um, all of a sudden, somebody said you're going viral, and I, you know, you start to wonder if you've got a disease. <laughs> <laughs> so we just sort of started on this wave and it just kept building and it's been it's been amazing. You said something really important, mm -hmm. Nancy. You said that you asked for this. Mm, I did. Because people sit and wonder, why not me? But you literally said you you reached out. You didn't sit with your arms folded. Is that no, how you I would see I'd been in relationships and and I I wanted to have a beautiful companionship and love relationship in my life. And, and I'd see people doing something like that proposal and I'd go, oh, I want that. Mm -hmm. Or I'd see people walking hand in hand mm -hmm. and I'd go, oh, I want that. So I just kept asking for what I should have. Wow. And now you have it. <laughs> now I have it. Okay, do you have wedding plans? Any wedding plans yet? We're working on that. Yeah. I still have a practice to serve out my days and sell a house, and I'm moving in with her for the rest of my life, uh -huh. back to where I had roots in California. Oh. We're going to get married in her backyard in her little pergola. Uh -huh. Her best friend is going to marry us, and I think it'll be October. We're working oh. on a date. Wow, how beautiful This is so is inspiring that? and lovely. Yeah, it shows you that love comes right on time. Yes, it does. It does. It does. Right on time. Uh -huh. Okay, well, we're thinking a romantic getaway could be nice for yeah. you all. What do you all think? Are you in? Why not? Okay, Why not? well, Apple Vacations is sending you on a honeymoon. Yeah. Really? Whenever yeah. your time comes right, you're headed to Unico 2087 Hotel, Riviera Maya, a high-end adults-only hotel oh my God. in Mexico for six days, five nights of relaxed luxury. <laughs> Ocean views, y'all, and you can enjoy fine dining, casual beachside buffets, round fair air trip. It's, it's a honeymoon. It's included. Oh, we couldn't have asked for it. Well, you guys have been such a delight. Oh, thank you for what you brought you. today. We love thank you all you. very much. Thank you. Wow. Way to go! Yes! I love We're love! So very moved. Oh. Now to another group getting a second chance at high school memories and giving senior prom a whole new meaning. These people missed out on prom as kids, but now... They're making up for lost time. Here's NBC's Emily Aketa. Let me put a little gloss on that. At 95 years old, Evelyn Hauser doesn't get to experience firsts very often anymore. Oh my God. But just outside of Baltimore, she's getting primped and pampered for a day that's long overdue. The final thing to make the outfit complete. Evelyn's daughter-in-law is helping her get ready for senior prom for senior citizens. Evelyn, why didn't you go to prom? I didn't finish high school. I had to go to work. I think it was tough. Her mom brought up seven children by herself, forcing her to work a lot. And uh, the kids, as soon as they could work, they went out to work. Turns out Evelyn isn't alone. Dozens of residents at Atrium Village Senior Living have never been to prom before. I said, well, we have to do a prom. You have to go to prom once in your life. Seniors and staffers spending weeks planning the perfect night, including clothes shopping, dance lessons, even promposals. I knocked on the door and uh, Joan was on the other side and it said, will you go to the prom with me? And she said, I will go to the prom with you. Well, thank you very much. It was a little corny, but sure, it was fun. It was in the spirit of prom. Absolutely. After much anticipation, alas, the big night has arrived, and so have the Melvins, who are pulling up in style, even if the limo ride is just a loop around the senior living community. The celebratory evening full of glitz and glam. From the walls adorned in gold decorations, to the carefully curated dinner, to the photo booth complete with props. Residents' families there to share in the fun, too. How meaningful is it for the two of you to get to go to prom together? This is like a dream. 
come true to go to the prom with a man that I love. My heart is tap dancing and I don't tap dance. <laughs> <laughs> While Joyce Melvin missed out on prom entirely as a teen, for her 93-year-old husband, Oscar, the day is about recreating a memory marred by discrimination in the 1940s. I was the only black guy that was there. It wasn't very pleasant for me. So his wife is making sure this time around is different. Sway. Sway. Swaying and swooning as their wedding song they danced to decades before plays. Is this an overdue moment for so many of these <laughs> oh residents? Very overdue. Several comments tonight are like, oh my gosh, we haven't had this much fun in years. I haven't smiled this much in years. And those smiles reaching ear to ear say it all. It's just very exciting, the whole thing. Coming up from second chances to second acts, these women are celebrating their next chapters. That's coming up after the break. to the boost as we celebrate second acts. After a long career in fashion and marketing and retail, one 70 year old fashionista found herself on a very different track, proving it's never too late to try something new. Chanel Jones has that story. I went into fashion because it was in my blood when I was born. Madonna Hanna is a fashionista at heart. As a five year old, I would go into my parents' closet, and I would reorganize their garments by color. <laughs> go home and be like, why are, my, why are our shoes reorganized by color? <laughs> she turned her childhood passion into a career in fashion marketing and retail. I came in as one of the few African-American Ex executives in downtown Boston and Jordan Marsh was one of the largest department stores in New England. My dream at that time was to be a buyer. At that time, African Americans were not going to be promoted to be buyers, just assistant buyers. It was the 70s and it was just one of those things. She then took her skills from the showroom to the classroom, teaching marketing in her industry for over 30 years. I wanted to give the industry that I love, people who on day one when they walked in, they would be able to contribute. It was her classroom projects that earned Madonna and her students national attention, like their Dare Not to Swear campaign. 500 students signed up to pledge not to swear. We were like flabbergasted, like what? Anna White sent us a nice photograph that says no swearing, and even the first lady, Laura Bush, reached out to us. In 2011, at the age of 57, Madonna had a new classroom, this time on the track. Go. As a student. It just came to me that I should run 100 meters. It was such an overwhelming feeling like, where is this coming from? 
She had no sports experience, but she had speed. Her husband, Steven, a former sprinter and track coach, stepped up to train her, even entering her in the Washington State Senior Games. I won. I won the 50 and I won the 100. 13 state medals, one national medal, and one ruptured Achilles later, Madonna was hooked. It's my life. Just like the seed for fashion, that seed for speed in my DNA, it didn't quit. In 2018, Stephen passed away from vocal cord cancer. He wrote that he wanted me to continue racing, build up my thighs, and to wear red, white, and blue at the National Senior Games. Madonna honored his request and continues to compete. Now with a new coach, Go. a beefed up workout regimen, and adding six more medals. I'm getting older and faster. Oh my gosh. And I'm, you know, beating my times before my ruptured Achilles. This 69-year-old is in it for the long run and going for gold. This journey of running was not, it was not my plan. It has taught me that absolutely anything can happen in life. Way to go, Madonna. Earlier this month, she competed in the 2023 National Senior Games in Pittsburgh and brought home the gold. Turning now to friends turned business partners who use their passion for food to inspire their second act. This duo is on a mission to share a taste of Italy with everyone and bring gluten-free options to the masses. Dylan Dreyer has that one for us. They were two Italian women who were told never to eat pasta again. It was like being uh, given a life sentence. No, it was a fate worse than death, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Cynthia Delia Coddington and Joe Provenzano Hoppy were both diagnosed as gluten intolerant 12 years ago. When you're Italian, you basically do nothing but think about what you're going to eat. Cynthia met Joe for the first time in 2019 at a neighborhood dinner that Joe made gluten free. And Cynthia says it was delicious. I really was shocked. From there, we became instant friends because this is a huge thing to have in common. But I should also say that we're both 100% Italian American. We're both the oldest children in our families. And it, the list just went on and on and on. Both women had recently retired from decades-long careers in Massachusetts, Cynthia in finance and Joe in technology. They were also neighbors owning homes in Maine, two lots apart. We really wanted to pursue um, other interests that we never had the time to do. In 2021, they took an online cookbook class during lockdown. And we started this project by, you know, asking our family, what recipes do you think would be great for us to include? We also had favorites of our own that we've adopted. Four tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. The mission was to help others who were on the same journey with gluten intolerance. About 1% of the population with the autoimmune disorder celiac disease must be gluten-free, but it's estimated that 10% or more also choose a gluten-free diet, helping support a growing multi-billion dollar industry. It is a special project, so we never really envisioned that we were going to be published authors. The challenge, Cynthia and Joe say, was to reimagine their family's recipes without gluten, but with as much or more taste. I have a biscotti recipe in the book, and it took many trials. And Joe and I went back and forth and tested each other's recipes. Both women had big shoes to fill from Italian mothers and grandmothers who made every meal an event. Every Sunday at two o'clock, it was the tomato sauce, as the Italian-Americans called gravy. And then the pasta to accompany it would be sometimes ravioli, sometimes spaghetti. So we were always nine people at the dinner table every night. At six o'clock, you had to be in your sleep um, and, and ready to eat. And it was important to have healthy meals, tasty meals prepared most of the time from scratch. 
Their cookbook, Senza Glutine, was self-published this year, but the two say it was a labor of love. It's like the very end of Casablanca when uh, uh, Rick turns and says, Louis, I think this is going to be the beginning of a great friendship. And that's exactly, that's exactly what happened in our case. When we come back, a big surprise for a very deserving founder. Stay with us. Welcome back to The Boost. We love a surprise around here. And on The Boost, our girl Donna Farrison has a great one for us. She visited The Gathering Place, a 50-plus community center in upstate New York, with a special gift for the center's very deserving founder, Kim. I'm so excited to crash this class, you guys. We are walking in right now. I have a bunch of members behind the camera. We're about to knock and surprise Kim Wachowski, the founder who is observing this line dancing class. Let's go get him. <gasps> Kim? Hello? What's going on in here? Hi, Kim. I'm Donna Farazan from the Today Show, and you are live on the air right now. Wave hello to Huda and Jenna. Hello? Come on over oh here, my Kim. <laughs> I, I know that this is a lot to take in. We're just going to come up on over here. Okay. And now I know that you are probably wondering what in the world is going on right now. Yes. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to take a look at this video oh, because yes. that will explain <laughs> how loved and appreciated you are here at the gathering. Okay. Hi, Kim. Surprise. This is my friend, Kimberly Wachowski. She had a dream. She's always been very interested in just helping out the aging community. I hate to say that word, but, but it is. Her dream has become the Gathering Place 50 Plus Community Center. It says 50 plus, but majority of the folks are like in the 60s and 70s and 80s and 90s. <laughs> and Kim is the engine that runs this. There are tons and tons of activities. I do a movement class, and it's a good class. It's the longest hour of the week. But <laughs> played cards, the movies, luncheons. I went on one trip. I don't know anything about the line dancing, so I started uh, learning some steps. They just started a new class that's once a month, is belly dancing. And, <laughs> and it's tough. It's very tough. The gathering place itself makes the community a better place, especially for older people. My husband recently passed, so it gives me an outlet. Oh, sorry. So I come here a bit, almost every day. <laughs> and I'm always encouraging other people, especially widows. We went from 100 to 200 members, then to 300. 
When we hit 700 members, Kim and I started looking at each other. Where are we going to put all these people? So we just got a generous benefactor to donate the money so we could put the new building in and double our space. But now we just don't have any money for furnishings, staffing, and supplies for the area. The expansion means that we can actually serve double the amount of people that we are right now. No one dreamt that it would get this big as quick as it did. The people who come there, they leave with a happy, and good feeling and Kim is responsible for that. She never stops thinking of what else can I bring in here? Give me some more ideas and I'll see if I can do it. Kim, I want to thank you for everything that you've done. We love you. You're doing a fantastic job. And keep going because we need you. Oh, we goodness. need you. <laughs> Connie said it best and everyone here in this room and beyond feels the same way. <laughs> What's going on? Where where is that emotion coming from right now? It's just this is a, <laughs> this place comes from the heart for me. Um, um, my grandmother had started one back in Connecticut years ago um, when I was in the 70s or when I was growing up in the 70s, and um, and then my mom ran tr uh, trips trips. <laughs> and, uh, so, um, you know, this was just something that came from me and, and came from God to, to just do this. And this vision I had in my head, and it's just come to fruition uh, way more. I can't believe how many people that we have. Um, and, uh, you know, it's really just trying to do the, the best for everybody, especially when you're aging and stuff. It's not easy. Um, I'm finding that out myself. <laughs> it's all about more pills. Um, but it's, it's so important to have supports in place. Your, your world changes constantly. Um, and especially after the whole COVID thing and stuff, you need, people need contact. They need to be together. So. Well, Kim, you are doing such an amazing job in this community and beyond. I know everyone here feels that you bring them so much joy. And I know that you're breaking new ground soon on a brand new edition because it gets as cramped as it's getting right now yes. on a regular basis. So we wanted to help you out with that. Can I give you this envelope? Do you mind just opening it up and, and showing it to the camera? This is like a war ceremony. Oh my oh. goodness. Wow. So Amazing. Kim, later this week is the return of Wayfair's Big Way Sale. And in honor of that, our sponsor Wayfair is giving you a gift card of $7,500 so you can spend it refurnishing, getting more decor. What do you think of it? Kim, I see tears in people's eyes. We're so happy. Kim, thank you for all the good work you're doing, and I hope this keeps it up. Awesome. Thank you so much. Coming up, we've got the latest viral video to boost your day. Stick around. back on the boost with one more story for you and it will put a smile on your face. Take a look. We have a new candidate for Big Brother of the Year. So a group of fans were trying to get autographs from players at Buffalo Bills, uh, their training camp. But watch 
as one boy goes out of his way to make sure his little sister hmm. gets a special moment with her favorite player, quarterback Josh Allen. Take a look. Josh, I got a question. I got a question. I got a question. Josh. My sister. Can you? That's so cute. She's literally crying. In the bucket, in the bucket hat? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Oh my god. Oh wow. That is it for today. We hope we were able to start your day with a little morning positivity. And we will see you tomorrow right here with more of the boost on today all day. Hey there, welcome to another episode of Start Today. You know, we've got more than 130,000 members in our Facebook group, and they're full of individuals just like you who motivate and support one another. And one of the most amazing things is how willing all of us are willing to share our personal stories. Never too late to join this movement. Just scan the QR code and become a part of the 430,000 folks who subscribe to our newsletter and get the jumpstart you need to improve your health. On this special episode, we're going to highlight some members from our community and see those health transformations firsthand. So let's get to it. This is Start Today. Let's begin with three women who formed an incredible bond thanks to our Start Today Facebook group. Christy Pham, Pam Dorsey, and Doreen Fox each joined our community with the same goal, to work towards a healthier lifestyle. But what they didn't expect? a lifelong friendship. They have cheered each other on from a distance and finally got the chance to meet in person. Here's a look at their story and the moment they met for the first time. I don't even refer to them as my Star Today friends anymore. These are just my friends. They've made me so much better. We can tell each other our secrets and we know they're not gonna go anywhere. What's unique about this friendship? Well, for one thing, Christy Pham, Pam Dorsey, and Doreen Fox live hundreds of miles away from each other. The other thing? Well, they've never met, at least not in person, that is. They each joined our Start Today Facebook group last summer, looking to make a change in their lives. I knew that I wanted to be a happier, healthier Pam. A massive transformation that started with just one little walk out my door. I'm more positive about myself. After connecting through the comments section in the group, they have come to lean on each other while carving their own special niche like Pam's daily posts of encouragement. Pam is the, the sunshine rock star of the group. Happy dance, happy dance. She sings her messages. It just lights up your day. When Pam took a break from social media during a bout with COVID, Christy stepped up and sent one of her infamous care packages. I call it my happy mail because when I see it, I, it's like, okay, Christy sent me some happy mail. If I'm having a bad day, she gets a card right out to me. And when a caring voice is needed, that's the call to Doreen. Doreen is an incredible friend. She probably is the reason why I was able to change my life because she saw me when I couldn't see myself. That is how she motivates and inspires. From strangers to a circle of friends, this Start Today group now coming together for the first time in Studio 1A. We told each other, no mascara that day because we're tears are gonna be crying. That is so Oh beautiful. my gosh. So, so Christy, we've made you guys wait in separate places. Yes. Are you ready? Yes. All right. Yes. Pam, Doreen, come on in. Here there's they come. There's one coming from one direction. All right. Okay. And there's okay, another there's coming from Pam another direction. Over here. Christy! Oh. Oh, my God. Oh. oh, my God. We have a come on in. We have another. Come on in. We have another. One more. Oh, oh there we go. Here, come, come on, over. take Here, a seat. Sit. Let me, yeah. let me Careful. scoot over. Okay. Here. This is amazing. Oh my God. Like don't the, separate this we is separate no, we now. won't separate you anymore. This is it. Oh so my goodness. What are you thinking? What does oh it feel like to be goodness. together, oh. together for the first time? We feel like family already. Oh. But to see them in person and to be able to touch. Oh my God. <laughs> 
you kept us apart. The the last words came Tell me wrong. something. Where do the tears come from? You guys come from different parts of the country. You just met over, you know, walking. Yes. Where are the tears from? Our hearts. <laughs> um, yes. Great, wonderful people. Where we've come from, what we struggled through, and where we are now. Thanks to the Star Today program. Yes. What has it meant to, to be part of this group? I mean, you guys obviously have formed this bond, but it's such a bigger group. I go on, I'm scrolling, I'm seeing these these messages and this encouragement. Pam, I've, Sorry, I've watched you. Uh, no, no. Uh, oh, when you po when you commented on my video the first time, I was like, oh my God. <laughs> oh, Al knows me, I'm famous. <laughs> He mentioned my dogs, and the other day, Patricia mentioned me, and he had my pictures up there. My husband and I are watching him, like, oh my gosh, That's the amazing. lives that we've changed just by exactly. posting our positive attitudes yeah. with each other. It's everything. And you guys have everything. done it. That's the amazing oh, thing. That's amazing. amazing. Uh, yes. amazing. You know, uh, uh, I think we want to make this morning even better. You know, we want to bring in another Start Today member you might recognize, our, our leader, Stephanie Monsoor. Oh! Stephanie, come on in. Do you want to say anything oh to these women? Gosh. You know, I am so incredibly proud oh, of all three of you, and not only for transforming your lives, but you have encouraged thousands of other members, other Today Show viewers, to encourage and, and change their own lives. And as a, your trainer and coach, that's like the best the thing best. I could ever ask for. Yes. Not only are you making the change for yourself, but once you take that time and put yourself first, you have that ripple effect. Yeah. I'm so excited yes. to meet you in person. Yes. Yes. Oh, I got to tell you, that was amazing. And it's always great seeing our Start Today group bringing folks together. Well, up next, we've got an inspiring woman who took charge of her life after an unexpected wake-up call. Plus, another community member who embarked on her own health journey. And she's going to share some great advice how we can all do it, too. We'll be right back after this. Welcome back to Start Today. We're continuing to highlight folks who have made incredible transformations and taken control of their health. Monica Poole joined our community after an unexpected wake-up call about her health. From that point, she committed to a better lifestyle. Everything changed when she shifted her approach to food and fitness by taking small steps to improve her health. Monica recently stopped by Studio 1A to share her progress with us. But first, here's a look at her journey journey kicked off in January of 2022. The catalyst was when my brother needed a kidney donor and my health prevented me from being a candidate. I was overweight, I had high cholesterol, and I was pre-diabetic. I decided to meet with a nutritionist who suggested the Mediterranean diet might be a sustainable lifestyle change for me. I had been a yo-yo dieter for most of my life, in addition to changing my eating habits and tracking my food for mindful eating, I started walking approximately 7,000 steps throughout the day. I lost 20 pounds by the summer of 2022, but then my weight plateaued. That's when Start Today became part of my journey, giving me the community I needed to keep going. 
I keep moving all day with additional walking, weightlifting, and my latest endeavor, yoga. Start today, help me lose an additional 40 pounds. I'm full of energy and I'm more productive at work. When I was overweight, I wanted to fade into the background. Now I want to be seen. All right. All right, well, let's see. Yay. Monica is here with us this morning. Monica, come on out. Oh, All right. Good morning. Welcome. Good morning. We're so happy for you. Thanks for Thank coming you. in. Thank you so much. Thank you. I got to give you a hug. Oh, please. Absolutely. Come on I've in. Bring it in. I've you forever. Oh, thank you. Thank you. See you. Give ourself at home. Yeah, thank for, you so, so much. So first of all, before we, we, we get into your story, how's your brother doing? Well, um, he's still waiting. He's on the kidney list. Mm -hmm. He's O positive. So if you don't, if you know anything about kidney kidney mm -hmm. donors, that's the longest list. Mm -hmm. um, he, he, his name's Zach Douglas, and I am. You know, we're just all just waiting. Mm -hmm. Just waiting. Yeah. Yeah. He's, yeah. And yeah. and did you reach your goal of, of getting healthy enough to become an, uh, a kidney donor? I did. Um, I worked with um, Cleveland Clinic, Florida, okay. and they were excellent as far as educating me on what I needed to do to be healthy as a kidney donor, mm -hmm. as well as um, staying healthy for the rest of my life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that was really the aha moment, yeah. because with yo-yo dieting, I was always focused on just losing the weight. Right. And um, Cleveland Clinic Florida really just drilled it in that this is a lifetime commitment. Right. But unfortunately, they found an underlying health issue I had oh. that I wasn't even aware of, hmm. so it. I was denied. Well, but on the upside, you know. Now, but so. it yeah. changed my life, yeah. so it was kind of ironic yes. that I started this journey to give to others, and he, you know, the, the journey actually gave to me yeah. and changed my life. That's great. What do you think were the, the biggest reasons that you, you struggled before this, this journey? I, I really think it was um, a perspective. I was like, oh, you know, I, I just have to lose the weight. It's all about the diet. It's all about the scale. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and this round, I was like, no, it's all about, it's all within my control. Right. Mm. Um, they recommended the Mediterranean diet, which I found to be very easy to follow. Mm -hmm. um, I also tracked what I ate, so it was mindful eating. Um, and I took steps, I had this goal, but I focused on the daily steps yeah. mm -hmm. the, um, that actually um, made the difference. So yeah. now it's not about the scale, it's, it just magic happens. When you focus on what you can do every mm -hmm. day that's within your control, the magic happens yeah. and it's still happening. Yeah. So we're coming up on vacation season, spring break, then summer vacations. So how do you maintain you know, this, the regiment that you have now when you're traveling, when you're, you know, do you have yep. cheat days? I mean, how do you make it work? Well, it's, it's hard when you travel, but I just went on a cruise with my family, uh, my brother-in-law, my sister-in-law, and we just kept walking in the morning. Mm -hmm. And Start Today is actually really in inspirational because every day you see people walking. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm happy to report I didn't gain a single pound back. Wow. wow. And, on a know, cruise? I'm, that's a yeah, feat. That's yeah. amazing. <laughs> that's a feat. And um, I mean, I didn't, I wasn't perfect, but that's the other thing. This yeah. is the lifestyle. Still vacation, yeah. too. You yeah. want to enjoy your life. And, right. And, and really quickly, yes. Monica, because a lot of folks, it's it's taking that first, it's starting today what what you, for folks who are trying to think they're just so overwhelmed mm -hmm. what's your one takeaway focus on what you can do today have a goal an eating goal and a moving goal um, for the eating goal focus on fruits and vegetables mm -hmm. get more in your diet um, for the moving goal just start moving and when I first started I would take 10 minutes here mm -hmm. 10 minutes there yeah. I would break it up through the day I mean now I, I walk an hour and a half every yeah. morning and it's nothing um, but it took me a year to get sure. there. Mm -hmm. wow. So and you um, did get there. That's the yeah. That's, that's the, the takeaway. And this past weekend, we walked 20 miles here in New oh York City. Oh my goodness! Good for you, well, Monica. Thank you. You're an inspiration. Congratulations. Thank you so much. We are so proud of Monica. Her story is a great example of how you take those small steps, end up with a big impact. Well, coming up, a community member who's changing her life one step at a time. And then later, how a second chance at life shifted a woman's perspective on health and fitness. We'll be right back.
We're back with more Start today. Last year, Patricia Woods Meadows set a big goal for herself, walking 10,000 steps every day. And like many of us, that pandemic, well, it flipped her daily walks to work upside down. The knee surgery set her back even further. But she was inspired to take charge of her health after she came across our Start Today Facebook group. Well, since then, Patricia has transformed her life and even reversed her pre-diabetes. Check out her story and the tip she shared on the third hour to help others kickstart their own journeys. Years I made excuses about why working out wasn't for me. By 2022, I was out of shape at my highest weight ever and in pain from arthritis and a torn meniscus. Plus, once the pandemic hit, my walks at work turned into me sitting at home. I knew I needed to make a change, but I never felt motivated enough to do it on my own. So I called my cousin Anthony and we decided we'd hold each other accountable to walk every day, sending our step counts back and forth to motivate each other. A few months later, I came across a Today Show story about Doreen Fox who lost weight by walking around inside her house. I was walking around my house too. I read that Doreen was part of the Start Today community, so I figured I'd give the group a try myself. As I continued to focus on improving my health, I scheduled a routine physical with my doctor where I found that I was pre-diabetic. I was scared to tears and I knew that letting myself go further was not an option. I immediately bumped up my step goal to 10,000 steps a day and I aimed to increase my goal by 500 to 1,000 steps each month. At home, I focused on portion control and I increased my water intake. My work had only begun, and I was excited to see where the journey would take me. All right, well, that is Detricia's story. Yes. But we have her here with us this morning. Detricia, come, come on out. out. Hey. All right. Oh, my God. Hey. Come this way, around this way. Yeah, we'll go around this way. Yes. Wow. Hello, it's yeah. so nice to meet you. It's so nice to meet you. <laughs> come, come. Ooh. Congratulations. Yay, no, don't yeah. cry. Don't cry. No, or or oh, Uncle Al, okay. I like that. Coming tears are okay. <laughs> yes. My gosh. Yes. So, Detricia, this is, is what a great transformation. What a wonderful story. And, and I think like a lot of us, you know, there are different reasons for you taking that first step, no pun intended. So, so what was it for you? Well, for me, it was, um, I had just recently learned that two people that I, I knew growing up had passed away, mm. and one was uh, complications of diabetes, the other one was heart disease. Mm. And we were the same age, oh. and I'm like, I don't want to have RIP next to my name oh, right. at 50 years old, you know. And then my mom, who's 70, she was walking I, just walking me out the box, right? <laughs> and I'm like, Mom, I'm 70 years old and she's walking better than me. Oh. So I, I got on the phone, like I said, with my cousin and we talked about it and I'm just like, he's like, what are we gonna do? Mm -hmm. I said, I gotta get this weight off. I know what I need to do, but I can't, I don't have the motivation to do it. But we just jumped out there and we started doing it. We set our goals and I haven't stopped since. Today is 280 for me. Oh my good, 200. Wow. In 80 days of walking. Wow. Way to go. Patricia, you look absolutely beautiful. Thank you. So a lot of us But you've got a glow, And too. you do. You Thank really you. do. So a lot of people watching and a lot of us and somebody sitting in the seat, you, st <laughs> you start and you're doing well, right? But how do you keep it going? I mean, 280 mm -hmm. days, sometimes it's hard for a couple of weeks. It, it is hard sometimes. Sometimes it's like, I don't want to do it, but then I, ha I have to remember my why. Your why. Why am I doing this? I'm doing this for me. I'm taking care of me. Nobody else is going to do this mm -hmm. but me. So that's, I, I just make myself get, whether I feel good or not, whether I'm hurting or not, I get up and I move every so day. So where are you on your journey now? Are you still... You know, do you still have goals that you're, you're trying mm -hmm. to reach? I'm still I'm trying to get to Wonderland, as the Start Today <laughs> family calls it. I um, what's so Wonderland? Getting into the 100 pounds. Mm -hmm. oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, the 100 pounds range. Right now, I'm sitting at 209, so I've lost 65 pounds mm -hmm. as today, um, and wow. I, I have about 20 pounds to go until okay. I reach my my first goal. Mm -hmm. So. And I'll keep pushing. Well, wow. Patricia, we are just rooting you on. Thank I mean, you. congratulations. It takes a lot of hard work, but you made that what first step. Look Thank at you, you now. Thank you. Any tips, it up? Any tips you want to offer to people at home as far as getting started? Um, my first tip is to see your doctor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Talk it over Absolutely. with your doctor. Even walking 
can cause hip issues mm -hmm. or what have you, but go talk to your doctor first. Schedule that physical so that they can see if any underlying mm -hmm. issues are going on. And then make small, realistic goals. Yeah. You don't right. want to say, oh, I want to do 10,000 steps, and then you discouraged yourself right. by exactly. not doing as much. So start off with small goals. Um, and just be kind to yourself. Yeah. Wow. Did if Stephanie Mansour oh, calls in say. sick, you can fill in for <laughs> yes. your motivation. You're very motivational. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you. That was just incredible. She really believed in herself, and we are still cheering her on. Just ahead, how a heart transplant gave one Start Today community member a second chance at life. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Start Today. This next community member can walk for miles. Now that's impressive enough, but it's been less than five years since her heart transplant surgery. Kathy Augustine is one of the 130,000 folks in our Start Today community. She visited Studio 1A back in February to tell us about her remarkable journey. And then join me and Today Fitness contributor Stephanie Mansour for a heart healthy workout. I was 27 years old and teaching kindergarten when I got sick with what I thought was a bad cold. It went on for weeks and I continued to get weaker. My mother insisted I get a chest x-ray. That's when the doctors discovered I had cardiomyopathy, a disease that changes the way the heart functions. I was rushed to the hospital for emergency open heart surgery five years ago. And then my heart stopped. After being revived, I lived with a heart pumping device called an LVAD for six months. Then I received a life-saving heart transplant. I had to learn how to walk again and use walking as a means to recover. My favorite place to walk is at Universal Studios. I joined the Start Today Walking Challenge last June because of its inspiring community. We're here at Universal Orlando. And in November of last year, I was able to be one of the walkers. Here we go! Alongside Al Roker and Stephanie Mansour at Universal. Since my surgery, I've lost 120 pounds and walked to 5K for Donate Life. I continue to walk to keep my heart strong. Now, let's let's meet her. Kathy Augustine, come on out. Good to see you. Oh, my gosh. That's fantastic, Kathy. Nice to see you. And, of course, look at that. That Woo! is crazy. What a, what a transformation. Well, we've got Stephanie Monsour, our Today Fitness contributor here. Kath, come on over. Uh, good morning to both of you. It is so good to see you. So first of all, how are you feeling? How are you doing with your new heart? I feel great. Every yeah. day's a new day. Yeah. And, and now, there was a point, I understand, you had to relearn how to walk. How, how difficult was that? I literally could not. Like, I was in the hospital for two months, and mm -hmm. I couldn't um, stand. I couldn't walk. I had to go to rehab and physically learn how to get up and walk, move my feet, and I just had to do that after my LVAD surgery. How, how important was that for, for your heart health, your, it was, your recovery? It was crucial because of I needed to get walking and get active, and my heart needed to get healthy. Mm -hmm. and, and you mentioned our, our Start Today Walking Club became part of your life. Yes. I joined in June of 2022, and um, I've just been a member, and I've seen all the motivational stories and everything. Um, Stephanie's been motivational. You've been motivational on your videos. Um, everything is just great because of every day there's new posts about how much people have walked or how much uh -huh. 
thinks people have been motivated. So, 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 Steph, you know, we, we think about, you know, it's Valentine's Day in, in yes. February, heart and emotion, but uh, it's also about health. That's right. You know, a lot of people think about cardio exercise when it comes to their heart health, and that is extremely important. We've got our walking challenge, uh -huh. you know. But in addition, for this month, for Heart Healthy Month, we are focusing on strength training. And that's because research actually shows when you combine cardio with strength training, uh -huh. you get more benefits for your heart than if you were just to do cardio exercise and that's because we know building lean muscle mass helps us to speed up the metabolism right. burn more calories and therefore help us maintain a healthy weight all right so you talk about upper body exercise yes so we're going to start off with some upper body exercises okay. so we're going to grab these dumbbells i all recommend right. starting kind of light mm -hmm. three pounds um and then go up from there okay. so what we're going to do first is the w exercise okay. so i really want you to connect emotion this month ah. our heart healthy month feel like a winner as Ooh. you go up into that w and then bring it back down. We're opening wide on this diagonal and then coming down to the shoulders. Abs pull in. Mm -hmm. Feel that, Kathy? Yep. Yeah, working the upper body and the shoulders. And then the next upper body exercise is a V for victory. Okay. So I want you to feel victorious as you do your workout. If you're sitting at home wondering, oh gosh, I don't know if I can do these with mm -hmm. the weights, that's okay. Put the weights down and just right. do this for some shoulder mobility. And, and how many uh, reps do you do? Ten you? repetitions okay. and then we move on to the next exercise. Okay. Next exercise? Yep. Now I'm going to show us goddess pose. So oh. we're all going to unleash that inner goddess here. Oh, so yeah. <laughs> even you, Al. Yeah. <laughs> so opening wide into a wide leg open toe squat. We're going to lower down, abs in tight, knees out to the sides, and then stand up, squeeze the glutes at the top. Good. So we lower down. That inner goddess is unleashing here. Stand up uh -huh. and working the quads, this the hip flexors, <laughs> and even the hamstrings. Now the next exercise is a warrior two. So uh -huh. Kathy, obviously you are such a warrior. Al, you You've been through so much you're a warrior as well what I want you to do is open the legs here into a warrior two position good knee over the ankle good turn yes exactly Al perfect abs in we bend the knee over the ankle and then we press to stand up so this is a dynamic yoga pose actually uh -huh. that we turn into a strength training exercise so if you're at home wondering okay how can I unleash my inner warrior maybe right. you've been through some health issues maybe you're just having a hard time getting started this year scan that QR code on your screen join our start today community. People like Kathy, myself, yep. you, Al, we're motivating you every step of the way. Kathy, Steph, thank you so much. Big thank you to our community members for sharing their stories with us. We hope it's inspiring you to embrace your own health journey. And don't forget, our online community is growing by the day. Scan that QR code to sign up for a daily dose of information and motivation in our Start Today newsletter and connect with other folks on the same mission to get healthy. And that wraps up this episode of Start Today. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time on Today All Day. Join Hoda Kotb for season three of her podcast, Making Space. Listen now. Open your eyes, you get to decide. How's my day going to be? We want to be a way to start your day. Lighten your load every single morning. Over the years, I've been lucky enough to step into the Today Show kitchen and watch the best chefs from around the world teach us some incredible recipes. And then we had made that pesto, which was, oh, exactly. darn. That's you know, I almost got that out of this one clean. Cool. Turn it down. <laughs> oh my God, I had one job. None of which I've mastered because, well, I actually don't know the first thing about how to cook, but I'm putting those days behind me for good. Today, executive chef Aisha Nurjaya is here to help me test my culinary prowess and step it up a notch. We are going to make a Mediterranean-inspired mezzi feast, including my favorite chicken shawarma with a tangy white sauce and homemade hummus, plus a few special favorites from her show-stopping restaurants, Shuka and Shuket. 
I'm a little nervous, a little intimidated, but mostly just so excited to try. So let's get started. Chef Aisha, you know oh, I am your super fan. And I appreciate that. And now you have heard that I don't know how to cook anything, right? I've heard that, but I want to see it for myself. Let's get started. Should okay, we perfect. Shawarma? Well, let's cheers first. Oh. I have a drink here. Oh, where's my Oh, what is this This fancy is a gizzo. So this is like basically a fruit juice that's topped with a little bit of seltzer. Mm. And some herbs. That is delicious. So there's some blood orange in here, some cara cara, a touch of grapefruit and seltzer. If we were feeling like getting a little litty, you could have put a little tequila. I could see a little something, a little something <laughs> extra in there, but I've got it. I've, we've got knives. I have to stay sober. We're for gonna this. stay focused right now. Okay. Okay. So let me look at the recipe. I'm sure. Because I'm a new cook, I get obsessed about the All recipe. Right. But I have a plan. Our plan for today is start the chicken shawarma, make and mix the white sauce, prepare the hummus, create a pantry salad, prepare the toppings for the chicken shawarma, and serve and eat. We're gonna start with the marinade first. Okay. Okay? So right to your left, you have some mm -hmm. lemon juice. Yes. We're gonna put that right in here. Okay. And then we're gonna use some garlic paste. Now okay. this garlic paste, I'm gonna hand yeah. this to you. Now this is one, I'm already scared. Garlic paste. Well, Don't first of all, I gotta open it. Okay. But I'm gonna oh, show you is. something. We're just gonna put a little bit of olive oil in the spoon and kind of coat it with this. Oh, you're like basically greasing your- Exactly. Wow, that is so smart. Right, so if Cooking <laughs> show over, this is incredible. <laughs> this is revolutionary. Would be great if you added a little bit of that olive oil in there. Mm -hmm. How all, much? All of it. It's like baking, where they tell you oh. like dry ingredients versus wet ingredients. Yes, you okay. want to kind of put the, either the, all the dry in first mm -hmm. or the wet. I How like much to do whisking? the whisking? No, that's fine, as long as it's combined. But right now we're gonna add a little bit of our spice blend. You have one tablespoon of black pepper. Mm -hmm. This is cinnamon. Four. Okay, so right this now. Is, that was paprika, this is cumin. Cumin. Yes, and this okay. is my favorite. Okay. It's the color of my shirt. Mm, it is. What is this? This is turmeric. I was gonna guess that. Oh, I love so it. So this is really gonna give that earthy flavor to the shawarma mm -hmm. and also that beautiful color. So we're gonna whisk that together. Mm -hmm. I'm starting to recognize Look how beautiful this marinade. This is. I know. All right, perfect. All right, so this looks beautiful. Okay. And now we're gonna do the onion. So okay, wait, one. I know how to do this. Okay. What so you wanna do is, at this point, you can cut the little piece off at the end. Here. Okay, okay. Okay. This is off. Yes. And then you kind of want to follow the curvature of the onion with your knife. So we're not going to slice straight down. We're going to slice like this, a little bit on an angle, if you will. Yes, perfect. Like that? Yep. Perfect. Okay. There you go. Mm -hmm. But now that's done. Look how beautiful that is. Okay. So we're going to put that in there. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. And we're going to mix this together. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do you mind grabbing the chicken. So right now we're going to use chicken thighs okay. and I love chicken thighs because I find them to be super forgiving. Yes. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to dump the chicken oh, right up so our thing. You're a wild woman. Because we don't need all of this paper. Okay. It's like Christmas. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Christmas. Okay. So I'm going to cut this first so I can show you. If you notice my, my hand is like this, mm -hmm. like okay. doing a C and then you're going up and down, slicing right through. Mm -hmm. How are you feeling? Good. Is it like... Okay. Beautiful. Is it? Yes. Okay. It's hard to do that knuckle thing. I know yeah. you're supposed to. You have to practice it. Yours looks like it's easy to cut and then when I do it I'm like sawing like I'm Paul Bunyan in the forest. You Maybe to, I just need to be more confident. Yes, you have Ooh. to be easy on yourself in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you have one more there. Okay, here we go. All right. Okay. Done. Now, your best, we have beautiful kitchen tools here, mm -hmm. but your best kitchen tool are going to be your hands. Oh. So you're going to get right in there. Ooh, and I like it with the gloves, because then I just don't feel all gross. Right. Mm -hmm. Hello. So you want to make sure that each crevice of those chicken thighs, yeah. remember the parts that we saw that were open, like where the bone was? Yes. That all that marinade gets in okay, there. Okay, so I really want to get in there. Exactly. Okay. These thighs have the life. The you're, full you're massage kidding. here. Look at this. They're living this their best life. treatment. It yeah. looks beautiful. So we're gonna have you put that in the refrigerator. Okay, I'm gonna cover and it and have, put it in. Yes, and I have one in there if you don't mind grabbing it that oh, has yeah. been marinated already. Okay. I'll make some room for you. Perfect. 48 hours later, 48 through hours the magic later. of television. Da -da -da -da, da -da -da -da. So let's uncover this. So this is made. Now, what if you really didn't have 48 hours or you're a bad planner? Like, I mean, what's you the could bare do, minimum? You could do it for four hours. You could. Really? But I can't guarantee you that, that really deep flavor. Got it. That's the only thing. Fair enough. So if you smell this, you can smell all that hard work that you mm. did with the garlic. Delicious. So yes. And I'm going to hand you this sheet tray. So the key here is what we want to do is make sure that we put this on the sheet tray, but we give it enough space that the heat is hitting it so we're not overcrowding it. Okay. Why don't so, I just help you out by kind of like doing a little bit of the dump method oh, here. is that all right? Yep. Oh, and okay. then you are going to use your tongs to okay. spread them out. Yeah, right. right. 
But like, does each guy like... have to live in his own little world? No, they just have to have a little space around them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Good? Yeah, I think Perfect. so. Perfect. Okay. So we'll walk this over to the oven. Now, does the rack position matter in this? As long as it's in the, it's, as long as it's, they're not on the same shelf, you'll mm -hmm. be okay. Okay. So I'll go here. Okay. okay. So we're gonna put that in there. Chicken shawarma is in the oven. But it's not a good shawarma unless you have this beautiful white sauce. You have to have the white sauce. So what is it? So have you ever eaten like out of a cart, a halal cart? Yeah. And you get like chicken over rice mm -hmm. and the guy says white sauce, hot sauce, and you like double white sauce? Yes. This is really where this recipe was born. Okay. It is now like the ranch of the kitchen. <laughs> Ah. Every, they put it on shawarma, family meal. I've seen it go on pasta. I mean, they take it to a French place. French fries? I mean, that's the best. Yes. That's the best application, if you ask me. <laughs> okay. So we're going to take some of the technique that we learned in the first mm -hmm. about the wet and the dry. Yes. And we're going to start this. So to your, your left, <laughs> okay. you have um, some creme fraiche. This is mayo. I recognize okay. that. Okay, we have mayo. A couple minutes. And then in your next container, we're going to have the yogurt. I like to use Greek yogurt because I like the thickness of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, it gives the sauce like a nice body. Okay. So okay. you have lemon juice there. Yeah. To your lemon left. Lemon juice. Your lemon okay. juice. Okay. Ooh. And then the next thing you're gonna do is gonna grate that garlic clove on the microplane. Ooh, now this have is scary. Have you done that before? I have, and I have to say these things are scary. The reason why you feel uncomfortable is probably because you don't want to nick your finger. Because I have nicked my finger. So what you would do is put on a glove. Okay, so so I'm gonna put the that. whole thing. Three quarters of it. It's an extra large clove we, I chose just so that you wouldn't feel. Mm -hmm. See, yeah, it's so close. scary. Like, am I am I doing like this? You are. Back Can I just forth? show you something though? Yeah. It, you have to be in a place where you feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. So this rested on here, yeah. this oh. at a point, and then if you do this, oh, you have a lot better. of space between you and the edge. So you could kind of oh, that's a better just do way it to like do three it. or yeah. four times. I gotta tell you, this gives me a little anxiety. So tap it three or four times. Oh. And let's turn it around. Should be all good. And that is perfect. One teaspoon sherry vinegar. Okay. Now, if you don't have sherry vinegar, red wine vinegar will do. One time when I was in high school, my mother said to me, Savannah, did you and your girlfriends drink my sherry wine, cooking wine? And I was like, what? no. <laughs> but then I thought to myself, huh, would that work? <laughs> Perfect. Mm. Okay. So and we're going to add the dry spices now. Oh. Oh, there they are. Okay, see, I missed it. I'd have been like, and we're done. White sauce over. Almost, no, almost. Okay. So we have black pepper, uh, mm. half a teaspoon. Okay. And next is our garlic powder. And here we have onion powder. Mm-hmm. One teaspoon onion powder. Onion powder and garlic powder are those two spices in, in your pantry mm -hmm. that will always get you out of trouble. Okay. If you ever need like a quick marinade and you yeah. don't know, onion powder, garlic powder, salt, and okay. olive oil do the trick. Like, it, like they cover all the sins. Huh? All the sins. Okay. There we go. Okay. Okay. Good. Okay. And then we have our salt. No salt. How much salt? One, one, one half, half teaspoon. teaspoon salt. Okay. How would you tell if this is good or not? I learned something. And what was you it? You must taste it. And here, <gasps> I present you with your magic tasting spoon box. I just love this. May I? Yes, ma'am. Okay. okay. And I'm going to taste it, too. And what we're tasting for is that all of these key players mm. are in harmony together. I mean, sprinkle my ashes with this. It you is did a great so job. good. Do you think now it's you good? Can, it's delicious. I think it's perfect. And now you can understand <clears throat> why my kitchen uses it on everything. I wouldn't change one thing. So let's put this in the bowl that we're going to serve it in, because oh, it's okay. one less step that we have to do later. Oh, smart. Okay. Maybe I'll get you another spoon. Oh, you got it? I'll do it like this. Okay. And the key when you do it like this mm -hmm. is just keep pouring it right in the middle. Oh, okay. It'll make a little beautiful mound. Mm -hmm. Is that good? Yes, it's perfect. It looks delicious. I get obsessy about Clean Plate Club here. Okay. Okay. So we're going to put this in the refrigerator. Has anyone ever licked the bowl? Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, this is also good with crudite. Oh, so if I was cooking, yes. I would leave this dirty bowl right here. Yeah. It's not chicken. We're okay. Yes. We'll have a little snack. So let's get this in the refrigerator. We're cover and refrigerate. Perfect. Aisha, ask and you as shall prom receive. As promised, we have, we have a little bit of uh, celery sticks okay, here. Let's just tie and this, it on. We're just going to have a little snack. I mean, we deserve it after all this oh cooking. Oh my gosh, we do. Can I double dip on my side? Yeah, of course. I mean, it's so good. Have I mentioned how good it is? <laughs>
for our next trick. Homemade hummus. Two words I never thought I'd utter. Why should I make it when I can go to the store? You could always customize it to how you want it. If you love garlic, if you like smoked paprika, if you want to keep it super plain. So we're going to show you a plain hummus. Okay. And then we're going to doctor it up mm -hmm. as you like. I heard through the grapevine that the machine we're going to use is something that you're not a big fan of. Don't say the food processor. I'm going to have to. It's like you're a home alone moment with the big furnace in the basement. I have food processor okay. fear. We're going to show you exactly that that, that how, it, how unintimidating it is. Okay. okay. So let's grab the food processor. First of all, it weighs 600 pounds. It does. First of all, this machine is built for safety. So we're going to open the blades mm -hmm. here. Okay. And then we have all of these uh, accoutrements, if you will. Now, see, so I'm this is, to get cut. Right. You always want to kind of assertively take it out and hold it by its edges, because this is very, very sharp. Yeah. This is the grater. This is what you would want to do if you were trying to make coleslaw. And this is the blade. So this slices things in discs. Okay. So if you had zucchini. Cabbage would be good in here, too. What about too. potatoes? I hate slicing potatoes. Potatoes would be perfect. Okay. okay, so that's this. And then it comes with this nice microphone. So you can sing karaoke <laughs> while you're making it. But that's really for the attachments, and we're not going to use that right now. Okay? And this is the blade. How do we choose this one? Because this is the one that's going to puree. Oh. So here we have right, chickpeas. Yes. So we're going to throw so them in here. Them in. One, two. Okay. Four cups cooked chickpeas. One half cup tahini paste. So you're going to take oh, that, it's not that your small, with your small little uh, spatula. Mm -hmm because you want to get every uh, oh, single I see. little it, morsel is, of that out. Maybe it is a little pasty. It could work with it's, this. It's viscous. Yeah. Okay, that's Okay, so that. your tahini is in. Mm -hmm. And then we have our lemon juice. One quarter cup of lemon juice. Right. Okay, Rotate. olive oil. Half cup olive oil. Okay, you can put that in there. Perfect. And then you have salt. Kosher salt. Now, this is one of those... Yes. How much? You guys, what, you, you chefs, you never want to say. Well, this is a good technique for you to learn. So that's nice, but this is what you really are going to look for. You want to make but it how rain. how do I know that? Because listen, you're going to have to learn how to cook by taste and touch. Okay. Okay? So I know that when I grab that, that that's mm -hmm. 28 grams. Okay. Because I've been cooking for a long time. Wow. So if a recipe calls for one tablespoon of salt, yes. can, I, can you open your hand? Mm -hmm. So you know That's what that, a lot. That, right, but you know what that feels like. Yeah. So half of that is what you would have used in that recipe, but I already put it in for you. Okay. So just so this way you know. <laughs> this way you know what it feels like. Okay. All right. I'm so gonna, put that on your board. Oh, put it on my board. It's okay. okay. And then we got to do a little bit over the left shoulder because you know we can't oh, have anything. Is that like a good luck thing? We walk out of here today. Okay. Okay. Perfect. So we're gonna put the lid on. Okay. You ready? Yeah. Let me just. Oh boy. Oh boy. Stand clear. So what I'm gonna do? Do I need to cover this? Is it gonna come exploding out? Hit this button. It just pulls. That says off. Okay. Good. Do it again. Where should I put this? Yeah, put your hand up there. Keep going. My pul well, now how come I don't just on it? So you can on it, but okay. what I like to do is kind of pulse it so it, that it gets all the ingredients together. So oh. now you can put the on button. Okay. And just let it rip for a little while. All right. Like have a sip of your gazos. This is fun. Sure beats chopping all this stuff. Absolutely. Okay. And we're going to stop this. And this is really quintessential when you're using this machine because the blade is on the bottom, mm -hmm. right? And it's only going in one direction. What we like to do when we use this is take the top off mm -hmm. and we like to go around, which I'm gonna do this time mm -hmm. and you'll do the next, and take what's the ingredients mm -hmm. that are on the bottom and kind of flip uh, them on their top. Because mm -hmm. we wanna make sure that when we're making this hummus that everything has its same consistency, okay? Have so, to go pulse again. No, you're gonna put it on. Oh. And at this point, we're gonna stream in some of that water. All at once or? or just a little bit at a okay. time. This is... One cup of water. Mm -hmm. I actually think that we might use three quarters of a cup. Now this part is not a definite in a recipe. Mm -hmm. It depends how much you dried your chickpeas mm -hmm. and how much liquid is in there. Okay. So if you dump the whole quarter, the whole cup of water in there, it could be too liquidy. Okay. We want something that's going to hold its peak. Look good. Yeah. You see that? It's getting smoother, yeah. which I like. It. And smooth. now you can see if you step on my side, you see how this is really moving slowly. Yeah. That's why you have to stop. All right. It's so time to stop. And right. And you're going to open. Have it. an intervention. Right. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Here you are. Okay, so now I'm just like kind of going around the sides. Let's yes. get everybody in there. Oh, okay, so okay. let's taste it. That's on point. Honey, that is delicious. Okay. Hummus. Perfect. So we're going to unclick it, mm -hmm. lift that up. Now, What's, how long can I keep this in my refrigerator? Three to four days. Okay. Okay. And, now and the same gonna... thing, you're going to spoon it directly in the middle. Mm -hmm. I mean, this looks delish. And at Shuka and Shuket, we do the swoosh. And in the swoosh, we usually fill it with not, lots of nice things. So I do the spice first? Yep, let's do the All spice over first. just in my little... Whatever you like. Well, I think it looks kind of fancy when it's like... Is that good or is it that is too beautiful. heavy? No, too no, heavy no, no, keep going. Okay. 
Mm. And you're gonna fill that pool and all the little divots here. Oh, I love it. This looks like professional. I mean, you're killing it. Come on. I'm coming over when you're oh, making this. seriously. How beautiful is that? Oh my gosh, that? that is gorge. All right. So we have some pita chips here. We could have had some crudite. Mm -hmm. I mean, listen, this is another one of those things. Why don't you take your little uh, celery stick? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. You do a little dip. Exactly. And we'll make you like the little chef tasting. Oh yes. Oh, that. I love that. And then we'll put that a little much, bit. huh? Oh yeah, my gosh. Yeah, yeah. Why not? Look at this. I mean, if we're gonna do I it. Mean, come to mama. Yeah. Okay. Oh, there we go. What do you think? I mean, it's so good. Awesome. So good. All right. Oh my gosh. <laughs> There is one thing I love at Shuka, Aisha, it's your salads. I love salad because it's it really represents the bounty of what is being grown. Nancy. We're kind of doing a pantry salad, if you will. Okay. So I found these things in the refrigerator. Okay. Okay. And we have some romaine mm -hmm. that I've just roughly chopped up here. Great. And what I'm going to do is show you how to cut uh, some of these tomatoes. Oh yeah. Okay. Not, not a, that's not a strong suit. So of mine. these are baby cherry tomatoes. So we're going to actually use a serrated knife for this. this nice. You're going to pinch the tomato a little bit, mm -hmm. and you're going to make it taut so that when you go right through the serrated knife and come back around, that it splits in half. Okay, wow. Okay. So I'm so you're gonna pinch it, you feel it's tight. I do. Right, put your knife and oh. go right through. Okay, great. Okay, we're gonna add it to here. Mm -hmm. And then here we have our uh, Persian cucumbers. Mm -hmm. I love to leave the skin on because they're so small. Oh, interesting. I, I always take the skin really? off. Really? But yeah, but that's just, I don't know. Well, they're super healthy. Yes. Um, the, the, the cucumber itself. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I think it adds some color and texture. Yeah. So because that's pretty small, I'm going to cut it, cut this into quarters. Mm -hmm. Again, I cut it in half. Those little. Perfect. And then Thanks. I would just cut them into half, ounce, half mm -hmm. inch little pieces. Now, now that, you do that's, it like that or is that I a bad think idea? that's a little aggressive <laughs> because again we want to be safe and we want to make it to the dinner table. <laughs> now I think so I'm just... doing a job. <laughs> so you want them cut side down because now they're not going to roll away from you. Oh, right, okay. right? And we're going to add these straight away to here. Okay we're going to add some pine nuts. Okay. Do you like pine nuts? I do. I love pine nuts. I like pine nuts because they actually have really good uh, fat content, mm -hmm. and they add like this luxurious feel when you bite into them. Okay. And then last but not least would be our feta. Okay. okay. Perfect. Yeah. So we have everything in the bowl here. Yes. And now let's talk dressing. Okay. My favorite go-to dressing is lemon juice, olive oil, honey, and salt. Okay. Can I ask your tossing technique? Sure. This is what I would do. I go from the bottom up. It's okay. the same thing like when you were marinating the chicken, mm -hmm. from the bottom up. Okay. And I it. personally mm -hmm. don't like a lot of dressing. Yeah. So I would just like do a once around. That's what I used to kind of figure people can add more if they so right. desire. How's that? Perfect, good? perfect. Okay. That's good. And then just. And then same thing, bottom mm -hmm. up. Yum. Maybe I'll put a little more feta because yeah. those nice little chunks mm -hmm. are now nestled Yum. at okay. the bottom. This looks delicious. Yes. 
Oh. So if you just want to put that to the okay. side, we have a few finishing touches before we eat. Okay. I thought we were done. What's this guy coming here for? Since you did such an amazing job and we've conquered your fears, we're going to bring him out again so that you can show him who's boss. The food processor? You know it. You and know this it. guy? Yes. Oh. But before we do that, I'm going to show you how to break this down. Okay. Okay. So this is red cabbage. Yeah. So we're going to cut a little bit of the bottom off. Like that, mm -hmm. and then you, and then you just want to remove the outer leaves. Yes. See what I mean? You got it. You got it. There All you right. go. I guess I just got to be They'll a little be, more aggressive. You could use a little force. Yeah. We're gonna cut this in half. You're gonna take the knife. You're gonna put it in as much as you can. Mm -hmm. Right in the beginning. Got it? Okay. Uh, yeah. Good. Good. See now I'm like okay. stuck, Hold and on. this guy's sticking right. out. Okay. So yeah. keep your hand flat. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah, so put yeah. your hand flat, mm -hmm. and now push all the way down. Whoa. It might take three or four saws, but just keep your hand flat. Go ahead, who's got it? Where's the chainsaw? Can I just okay, saw on, it on, on the other side? Okay, let me help you for a second. Because what happened is that your knife is now in here, not the blade. Oh. So we're gonna take that out, okay. okay? And then when you get to this point, you're gonna take your knife, yeah. you're gonna go straight down on this side, yeah. flip it, and straight down yeah, on the other side. Yeah, that's what I would wanna do. Okay. I'd wanna be like, shoot, shoot, like this. You know the other thing that's, oh, ouch, darn it. What happened? I've never gotten through a segment without, no, it was just a little tap, okay. just a little so wait, hold tap. On. But let's do it together so you don't have a tapping problem again. Oh, okay, great. Hold on, hold on, put it down, put it down, put it down. Put it down. Starting to see we're what We're gonna go down here, okay? And then you gotta be assertive and go down here. Okay, now right. what are we doing? Just cut it in half again so that I know that okay. you can do it. God. Okay, good, see, so you did it. Who'd think this would be the hardest part? Okay, so let's get the machine. You don't need all of that because we're gonna okay. all right. buzz it one, two, three. Okay. Okay, you wanna get the Where's bottom? my friend? Okay, here we go. Mm. There's Jeez. your friend. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Now this part is a little more complicated than the other one. Oh, now so I'm going to show you plates. how to use these guys. All right. Okay. One is that you should always know that they're super sharp. Okay. So you only want to touch the edges. Okay. This part you want to hold down. Mm -hmm. You see how that little piece goes down? Yes. And you are going to turn it just like this was on an angle and then slide it in. So on an angle and slide Can it I in. Can I try it? Of course. I don't Easier know. Enough. Okay. There. Okay. All right. That's it. Boy, I never knew that. Okay. So it's locked in here, right? Yes. You heard it snap. Oh. We're going to put that in here. I want to put it together. Okay, I just spun it because you need the bottom to like, that's probably, you're gonna turn this on. Mm -hmm. Oh, already? Okay. Yep. Okay, so now it's spinning. So now you're gonna take the cabbage. The heart is racing. And you're gonna put pieces of it in. Okay, and now you're gonna put that in there. There you go, oh! look at this. There you are. This is fun. Get in there. There you go. Get in there. Yeah, good. So we're gonna shut the machine now. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Okay, and we're gonna wait for the blade to completely stop spinning, yeah. right? And we're gonna open this, mm -hmm. and you see that in the inside? Mm -hmm. I mean, that looks incredible. Right? Okay, okay, now I get it. So I get now it. We're the gonna food take, processor. if you would, please, mm -hmm. take this out. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. What's this for, anyway? For, this... for the shawarma. Oh. We need a fresh crunch okay. on top, okay? Yes, we do. Okay, so we have that in here. Mm -hmm. You're gonna take the top out. Mm -hmm. okay. All right, let's go. All right. So this is gonna give you more of like a slice of okay. cabbage. Oh. I like this way better, personally, because mm -hmm. I like a lot of texture. Mm -hmm. As you can see in this bowl, it's kind of like confetti. I like that, actually. Perfect. We'll do one more little piece, mm -hmm. and then I think we'll be ready what to go. What did we do in the olden days before food processors? Oh, actually, you have some tongs there. Mm -hmm. I'm just put a little Yeah, just each. put a little bit of yours on that half. Mm -hmm. Come over to my way, the minced ca bit. cabbage way. There you go. Look at, isn't that friendly? Okay. Perfect. Okay. Yum. We have one more thing. The star of the show, the chicken shawarma. Oh my gosh! Hello. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. Wow. Oh, look at this. Man. Smells delicious. Come to mama. Take that okay. one. And I'll take yeah. this one. No, we never yeah. looked at it. Should I have been checking it? How do I know it's done? It's pretty foolproof the recipe when it comes to cooking. If you want, if you touch this piece right here. Mm -hmm. See how it gives you like almost zero uh, resistance? Mm -hmm. That means that it's cooked. Mm -hmm. And same way you've been doing it. Just gonna load just it up. right in the middle, yeah. Mm. Wow, that looks good. All right, perfect. So let's get this, mm -hmm. and can you grab the salad? Yes, ma'am. And we'll get to the table.
I can't believe we did this. I mean, I can believe you did this. You I can't know. believe I did you this. You nailed it. You have to stop telling people that you know how to cook. Look at this spread. <laughs> how do you eat your chicken shawarma? How do you prepare okay, it? Okay, perfect. Okay, I'm going to show you. I want to see. So I can't help but make a sandwich because mm -hmm. how could I not? So I'm going to give you my okay, half, yes. okay? And then what I like to do is kind of mix some of these condiments. So oh. here we have harissa and zug. Mm. And here's the white sauce we made. Okay. So of course we have to put some white sauce on here. Come to me for those white sauce. Okay, I'm just gonna spread it out. What's yeah. zug? I didn't know what that That's, is. That is, here you go. And then you wanna yeah. spread okay. some of that in there. Mm -hmm. This is um, a, a cilantro, serrano chilies, and cardamom. Mm. I wanna get some of these onions some of and stuff in there, right? Yeah. And then I love to eat with fresh herbs. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna give you some. Are you okay with mint and cilantro? Do I and just a, shove it in? Just there? shove it in there. Okay. And then of course we have to bring over our cabbage. Okay. Let me turn this around okay. so you could have your so half. My, I'll just do mine. And I'll have mine, yeah. We're just kind of sprinkle it's it in. The rip there. and dip, you know? I mean it's beautiful. You know how to do that. And then I'm gonna take this. Come mm -hmm. do you like spice? Yeah. Okay. So we're gonna do a little baby drizzle. How about okay. that? There. Yum. And then we'll have to do just a little. Just a little on I your was first bite, ask, you know what so I mean? Thank you. Yes, I want a little more. Okay, perfect. Mm -hmm. Okay. Should we cheers? Cheers. Thank you so much. To an so amazing much. job. Thank yes, you. I love it. All right, let's, let's see. Mm. It's so good. It's so good. So good. Mm. Delicious. I'm going in for more. Mm. You ever put hummus in it? Of course. And that's the beauty of the sandwich. Like as you're eating, yeah. you kind of just like put a little bit more of something else on top. I know. Do you, don't mind me if I just lick my fingers here. It's supposed mm. to be messy. Drag the swirl. Mm -hmm. I love it. Mm. For me, this is kind of fancy and fun food, but this is a classic family meal. Absolutely. The reason why I love like the Middle Eastern Mediterranean style of eating is because it's all of these little small plates, and you could really rip and dip and match. And no two flavors on this table don't go well together. There's something for everyone. Absolutely. Even my kids. Even the kids. <laughs> Delicious. Thank you so much. Mom said don't talk with your mouth full. But sometimes you can't help it. Mm -mm. I truly am. Thank you for showing me this. My pleasure. It was an honor to be cooking with you, and I'll do it anytime. You mastered all of the <laughs> food processor, your knife skills. I think you're going to nail it. Well, cheers. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you. Good Monday morning. Legal troubles mounting for Donald Trump. Criminal charges over election interference as early as this week. It is July 31st. This is today. Bracing for impact. It's a great badge of honor because I'm being indicted for you. Donald Trump facing another indictment tries to go on offense on the campaign trail this weekend as his Mar-a-Lago employee goes to court today, accused of conspiring to delete incriminating security footage in that classified documents case. The legal twists and turns just ahead and what was just revealed about the millions in campaign donations going to the Trump legal defense. Kidnapped, an American aid worker and her young daughter abducted in Haiti. She has sacrificed her life uh, to do good for a country that desperately needs the help that she provides. This morning, the scramble to get them home and U.S. officials ordering government workers to leave as the nation slips further into civil unrest. We'll have the very latest. At last, millions set to enjoy the first relief in weeks from that record-shattering heat wave. But not everyone is out of the woods just yet. Al's got your full forecast. Breaking her silence, the wife of the accused serial killer on Long Island speaking out for the first time, her message and where the investigation now stands. Those stories plus real life Jaws. The large shark caught on camera repeatedly attacking a fishing boat off the coast of Florida. I didn't think a shark could actually shake the boat like that. And I'm like, are you kidding me? This is like a ride from Universal Studios. The inside story behind that wild video. And in it to win it, the U.S. women gearing up for their next big match of the World Cup overnight with a ticket to the next round on the line today, Monday, July 31st, 2023. From NBC News, this is Today with Savannah Guthrie and Hoda Cuppy.
live from Studio 1A in Rockefeller Plaza. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to you today. It's Monday morning. Nice to have you along with us. All right. So if you're going to stay up super late, which we hope to, it's Team USA versus Portugal in the World Cup. Come on, ladies. This is the big one. Yeah. This determines whether or not they go to the next round. So we will be watching no uh -huh. matter what time of day it is. <laughs> exactly. It's a little thing called DVR. <laughs> exactly. All right. Also this morning, can you hear that sigh of relief? The record heat we've been talking about for weeks finally broken in certain regions over the weekend. Parts of the south, though, are still facing some record high temps. Al, of course, will have it all covered in his forecast in just a bit. But first, let's get to our top story. Donald Trump facing the prospect of new criminal charges this week tied to his efforts to overturn the 2020 election. This comes just days after the special counsel revealed additional charges against the former president and two of his aides in that classified documents mishandling case. NBC's Garrett Hake is in Washington with the latest is Garrett. Good morning. Hey, Savannah. Good morning. Now, all eyes in Washington once again on the federal courthouse behind me where grand jurors are set to reconvene tomorrow and where another indictment against Donald Trump could come as soon as this week. This as the former president's lead in the polls and his legal bills continue to grow. These are ridiculous indictments. Donald Trump's legal battles in the spotlight and racking up costs. This morning, a key court appearance from a new Trump co-defendant, Mar-a-Lago property manager Carlos de Oliveira. He, along with Trump and an aide, facing federal charges related to the former president's handling of classified documents after leaving the White House. Prosecutors say Mr. Trump asked de Oliveira to delete security camera footage at the estate to obstruct the investigation. Mr. Trump and his aide Walt Nata pleaded not guilty to the original indictment last month. It's a great badge of honor because I'm being indicted for you. As the former president could face indictment this week over another case, his efforts to overturn the 2020 election. And it all comes at a price for Mr. Trump and his supporters. The Washington Post reporting that his political group spent more than $40 million on legal costs in the first half of 2023 to defend Trump, his advisors, and others, according to people familiar with the matter. But he remains the Republican frontrunner. Mr. Trump's fiercest Republican critic, 2024 rival Chris Christie, evoking the godfather to mock the GOP frontrunner over the classified documents case. It's pretty brazen. The, the, these guys were, were acting like the, um, uh, the Corleones with no experience. But two of Mr. Trump's Republican opponents say they're inclined to pardon him if he is convicted. I don't want there to be all of this division over the fact that we have a president serving years in jail over a documents trial. I would pardon him. The former president now threatening fellow Republicans who don't share his appetite for revenge against President Biden and the Justice Department. Any Republican that doesn't act on Democrat fraud should be immediately primaried and get out. Out. On the campaign front, NBC News tracked down 44 of Donald Trump's former cabinet officials. Some declined to comment, some didn't get back to us. But when asked if they would definitely support the former president next year, only four, four of those 44 said they would. Among, among them, uh, his former chief of staff, Mark Meadows. Among those who said they would not support the former president, his former attorney general, Bill Barr, who, when we asked what he would do in a situation where it was Trump or Biden, as it was in 2020, told us, I'll jump off that bridge when I get to it. Savannah. All right, Garrett Hake, eventful week, perhaps, in front of the courthouse. Thank you. Appreciate oh, it. Also this morning, tensions are escalating between Russia and Ukraine after a series of drone attacks in Moscow over the weekend. While not taking responsibility, Ukraine's president saying the war is now, quote, returning to Russia. NBC's chief foreign correspondent Richard Engel joins us now with these details. Hey, Richard, good morning. Good morning, Hoda. President Putin is not looking strong this morning. The Ukrainian offensive against him is intensifying. He survived a short-lived mutiny. And now Moscow itself is increasingly targeted by drones. The drones exploded in the heart of Moscow's financial district on Sunday morning around 4 a.m. Russian officials say at least three drones were involved and blamed Ukraine. Russians can no longer turn a blind eye to this war now that it's coming home. Although Ukraine didn't take responsibility, President Zelensky gave what seemed to be the most direct admission of cross-border attacks into Russia yet and suggested a new chapter is beginning. 
Ukraine is getting stronger. Gradually, the war is returning to Russian territory, its symbolic centers and military bases. And this is an inevitable, natural and absolutely fair process, he said. The war continues to be a disaster for Russia. 523 days in, Russia seems no closer to victory than when it first invaded. The Russian army is so short of troops, it had to raise the age limit for conscripts. But you wouldn't know it listening to President Putin, who was busy celebrating Navy Day this weekend. In the name of Russia, our sailors are giving all their strength, showing true heroism and fighting valiantly, as our great ancestors did, he said. Small, explosive drones have been central to the war from the start and are now exposing Moscow's vulnerability. In May, the Kremlin itself was attacked by drones. Ukraine denied involvement at the time. But attacks are becoming more frequent. This was the fourth drone attack in or around Moscow this month. And Ukraine no longer seems concerned about hiding it. In addition to attacks inside Russia, Russian defense officials accuse Ukraine of carrying out drone attacks against the occupied Crimean Peninsula, including one which Russia says it stopped, involving a swarm of 25 drones. Hoda. All right, Richard Engel for us there in London. Richard, thank you. There is growing concern this morning for an American aid worker and her young daughter who've been kidnapped in Haiti. Their abduction comes at a time of rising unrest there with the State Department now evacuating some embassy staff and warning Americans not to travel there. Embassy's Kristen Dahlgren's got the very latest for us. Kristen, good morning. Good morning, Savannah. Well, Alex Dorsonville may have been from this small New Hampshire town, but those who know her say she was really drawn to a life of service, nursing small children in the nonprofit that her Haitian-born husband founded. This morning, that organization says it is doing everything it can to get her and the couple's young daughter home. This morning, American Alex Dorsonville and her young daughter Haven remain missing after reportedly being kidnapped near Haiti's capital, where she has lived for at least three years, according to the nonprofit El Roy. My name is Alex. I'm a nurse from New Hampshire, but now I live in Haiti. The 31-year-old nurse works for the faith-based organization that has a school and ministry in Haiti and is married to the organization's founder, Sandra Dorsonville. Sandro invited me to come to the school to do some nursing for some of the kids. He said that was a big need that they had. Elroy says Alex and her child were taken from their campus on Thursday, writing in a statement, we continue to work with our partners and trusted relationships to secure their safe return. Details of how they were abducted remain unclear. Alex was very compassionate and cared very much for people who had great need. Alex attended Regis College in Massachusetts, whose president is not surprised her former student chose a path of service. She was definitely um, a very special young woman. The same day the mother and daughter were taken, the U.S. State Department issued its highest level travel advisory for Haiti, warning Americans not to visit, citing crime and civil unrest, adding kidnapping is widespread and victims regularly include U.S. citizens. The State Department also recalling non-emergency personnel from Haiti's U.S. Embassy. We have very deep concern for the situation there. The United Nations estimates armed gangs control 80 percent of the nation's cities. El Roy says they are in close communication with Alex's family and are working hard to get them home. Now, both the State Department and White House tell NBC News that they are aware of the reports of the kidnapping and are in regular contact with Haitian officials. Savannah. All right, Kristen, thank you very much. Uh, 11 after the hour, we have more to get to. Craig joins the table. Hey, Craig. Hey, hello, good Savannah. Good morning. Good morning to you as well. Some new developments this morning in the Gilgo Beach serial killings on New York's Long Island. For the first time since the arrest of that Manhattan architect in the murders of three women more than a decade ago, his wife now breaking her silence. NBC's Stephanie Gosk has been following the story, joins us with more. Hey, Steph. Hey, Craig, good morning. Rex Sherman's wife is asking for privacy and normalcy after investigators and the public flooded the neighborhood where the couple live for weeks. Her husband allegedly living a double life, a family man who commuted to work in Manhattan. Prosecutors now believe he is a serial killer. 
Days after investigators wrapped up collecting evidence at Rex Hearman's home, his wife, Asa Ellerup, and her two adult children returned to a life they no longer recognize. It's been a very tumultuous time for them. Life has been thrown upside down in the past few weeks. The family of a Manhattan architect charged in the Gilgo Beach serial killings is now asking for privacy, writing in a statement that they have endured profound and indescribable catastrophe. Herman's wife adding, I am pleading with you all to give us space so that we may regain some normalcy in our neighborhood. The streets were closed. You had to get access by police escort to get to your own home. The neighbors have been impacted just as much as she has. Some neighbors are reaching out, sending care packages and grocery deliveries. One writing, dear neighbors, we are thinking of you through this difficult time. If there's anything we can do for you, please let us know. Ellerup filed for divorce on July 19th. Right after 59-year-old Herman was arrested and charged with three counts of first-degree murder in the deaths of three women in their 20s, believed to have been sex workers over a decade ago. And he's now the main suspect in the disappearance and death of a fourth woman. We have obtained a massive amount of, of uh, material. Following a nearly two-week search of the family home, investigators say it'll take time to analyze and catalog what they found, as police in other states are also looking into potential connections to other unsolved crimes, including in Las Vegas, Nevada, where Herman had a timeshare, and in Atlantic City, New Jersey, for possible ties to the 2006 eastbound strangler case, while his estranged wife focuses on moving on with her life. She needs to protect herself and her children at this point, not knowing what's going to happen with him. We've reached out to Rex Herman's attorneys for comment and have not heard back. He has pleaded not guilty and is scheduled to appear in court tomorrow, guys. Okay. Thank you, Steph. You're welcome. All right. One of the largest trucking companies in the country is shutting down and laying off its employees. Yellow Corp notified its 30,000 workers of the decision over the weekend. The company is expected to file for bankruptcy after failing to refinance over a billion dollars in debts. Its customers included retailers like Walmart and Home Depot. The closure comes just days after Yellow averted a strike from 22,000 of its unionized workers. And now to some frightening moments for beachgoers in New Hampshire over the weekend. A plane went down right in front of them. It was all caught on camera. This happened near Hampton Beach. Look at this. Wow. A plane towing a banner, Jeez. crash landing, just 90 feet from the beach. Thankfully, the pilot of the plane did not suffer any serious injuries. Lifeguards were able to help him get back to shore. Beachgoers say it was a miracle mm. that nobody was hurt seriously. Indeed. Mm. All right. Uh, the extreme heat that's gripped the nation for several weeks. Folks, it is finally starting to ease in some areas of the country this morning. And it comes after severe storms that have ripped through parts of the East Coast this weekend. Places like Virginia, Maryland, Washington, D.C. hit with 80 mile per hour winds, knocking down trees, leaving hundreds of thousands without power. Those storms extended all the way up to New York and New England. But, uh, Mr. Roker, with that, I understand it comes a break from that sweltering heat for some, not yes, everyone. Yes, for some, not everybody, but the areas. How do you like our new little circles here? Right. Right. That Beautiful. is our new graphics. Yay! <laughs> anyway, let's show you what we've got going on. 39 million people. That's way down from last week when we had like almost a third of the country under heat advisory heat warnings from Kansas down into the Gulf Coast all the way to Florida. Again, that heat still hanging around. The heat dome shifting to the east as that large uh, ridge of high pressure still brings the heat for Dallas, Alamosa, San Antonio, New Orleans, Vero Beach, Miami. They may set records again today and on into tomorrow for Brooksville, Key West, New Orleans, Beaumont, Corpus Christi, and Dallas. But here here in the Northeast, Great Lakes, Mid-Atlantic, on into New England. Look at these temperatures. This nice and seasonal. This is what summer should be all about. We're going to get to your local forecast in the next 30 seconds.
welcome to today. Every day. We are adding to the star power in our studio. The biggest names, only on today. See, we're coming to this early, right? Everybody, it's today. Like I won the lottery. How do you feel at this age, this stage, liberated? We're just getting started, folks. Ain't no stuff with us now. The boys are back in town. The boys are back in town. It's a miracle. It's a miracle. This has been fantastic. Everything and everyone you're talking about, only on today. Welcome to today. So happy to see you guys. Would you like my boost? Yes. Back, here we go. But sometimes we just do things to help. That's our Hoda. Happy birthday. We got an awesome crowd, y'all. And that is your latest weather, guys. All right, Al, thank you. All right, coming up, guys, a shark attack straight out of a movie. So a drone captured this, large bull shark attacking the engines of a fishing oh. boat off the coast of Florida. Gotti Schwartz has this one for us. Hey, Gotti. Hey, good morning, that. You gotta see to believe a massive bull shark homing in on a fishing boat like a missile, hitting it over and over and over again. We're gonna hear from the guy on that boat coming up next. Scotty, thank you. Then hopeful signs on the recovery of Bronny James after his frightening collapse at basketball practice and the new message that his father LeBron is sharing, what we're learning about his son's health scare one week later. But first, this is Today on NBC. Even the videos yeah. this Good morning, welcome to you today. What's shaking eggs and bacon? Hold what? on, I'm just gonna say it. What? Badass. Oh, thank you. So do you think you'll act forever? <laughs> Boom. <laughs> We're gonna have lots of fun yeah. this morning. Yeah. Good morning, everybody. Here's what's happening in your neck of the woods. Oh, you deserve to be celebrated. Way to go, Reynolds. Oh, Al. Al, you're all of our heroes. Yeah. Y'all love Al Roker. Just ahead this morning, we're going to launch a new series, Today in the Wild. Ooh. Yes, so we're going to start with Sam Brock. He's hanging out with crocs. Oh. We're going to give you a first-hand look at the efforts to save the American crocodile from extinction and why that is so very important for all of us. Mm -hmm. We'll get to that in just a few minutes. But first, your local news, some weather, and these messages. Oh, I thought you were talking about the shoes. <laughs>
Hey, Barbie. Yeah. Can I come to your house tonight? Sure. I don't have anything big planned. Just a giant blowout party with all the Barbies and planned choreography and a bespoke song. You should stop by. So cool. Yeah. <laughs> OK. Bye. Bye. <laughs> We're back. The hottest movie on the planet. Barbie, man, dominated the box office once again. It earned another $93 million wow. at the North American theaters, making it one of the most successful second weekends of all time. A couple of those bucks were ours. How Took was the kids. it? Did you love it? You know what? It's really fun. It's, it's, fun? it's just a fun, even like my six-year-old boy liked It's okay. visually interesting. Ah, it's fun. For all. I okay. mean, guys, it's a phenomenon. Well, when you think about how much it earned worldwide, $775 million so far, and yeah. it's already one of the highest grossing films of the year, and then Oppenheimer. Second spot. Second spot. Listen, Did you see Oppenheimer? I've, I, I saw Wreck-It Ralph Saturday night. <laughs> yeah. The kids. For it's the, like Oppenheimer. The 28th time. <laughs> so. Well, uh, theaters are having a moment yeah, in the summer, yes. and that's yeah, all they are. We like that. Uh, another big story this morning, guys, a shark attack. The sh a shark attack, the likes that we have rarely seen. It's pretty wild if you look at this video. A drone captured it. A dramatic encounter between an aggressive bull shark and a fishing boat. This happened off the coast of Florida. NBC's mm. Gotti Schwartz has got the story behind that video. Hey, Gotti, good morning. Hey, good morning, Savannah. That's right. This was kind of like that famous scene in Jaws where the shark comes flying out of the water, lands on the boat, only this time the boat was big enough, and this time no one was hurt. This stunning scene happening off the coast of South Florida, a bull shark repeatedly launching itself at a fisherman's boat. And all of a sudden, something switched in the shark's brain, and he just went into full attack mode. Video producer and fishing guide Josh Jorgensen had been following a school of fish with his drone when he caught the shark battering his friend's boat. And he just went completely nuts and just started attacking the engines and just ripping them to pieces. Fishing boat captain Carl Torreson said he couldn't believe how much damage the shark caused. I didn't think a shark could actually shake the boat like that. I'm like, are you kidding me? This is like a ride from Universal Studios. Ah! In May, a similar incident captured Hi, off the coast of Oahu. Tiger shark ram me. Kayak fisherman Scott Haraguchi rammed by a 10 to 12 foot tiger shark. It's miraculous that I didn't get knocked over. While in Florida, the shark bite capital of the nation, a recent string of attacks leading to alerts and beach closures. Looks like we got a hammerhead shark. A 12 year old girl bitten on the leg while swimming at Cocoa Beach. It hurts like incredibly bad. It was really, really painful and I just wasn't expecting it. But unprovoked shark attacks are rare and fatalities even more so. Researchers at Cal State Long Beach spent two years filming California beaches where great whites hang out and learned they come close to swimmers and surfers almost daily without humans even knowing. I think most people's conception of what a shark, a white shark is, is that if you see it in the water, it's going to bite you. And I think one of the things our study showed is that's simply not true. Even bull sharks, known to be more aggressive, don't usually charge like this. When they do, it can look like something out of the movies. I know this sounds insane, but that scene in Jaws where it jumps on the back of the boat, that is totally possible. Wow. Well, it seems like we're hearing a lot more about shark sightings and bites and, you know, at least compared to other years. Do we know why? Yes, Savannah, so we've seen a steady rise in shark attacks and sightings since a low point in the 1970s, 1980s, but a lot of experts are pointing to conservation efforts and a lot more people living near coastlines as reasons as to why we might be seeing that. Fortunately, 